Right now, you guys are in the uh, one of the open chambers where some of the canvas huts were. Um, there's a lot of boulders, a lot of rock, and a, definitely an awful lot of cave-in is here. Um, right ahead of you here is the continuation, and it seems to be, as you've experienced, it's mostly the tight, narrow corridors that seem to have completely filled in. Some of the larger areas still have space to move around. Alrighty. At this point, Physic is probably scratching something in a notepad, trying to come up with some convoluted way of getting out of here faster. I want to cast Identify on the dagger. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that's right, because you had gotten enough um, didgeridooly um, pearls and stuff. Pearls, okay. yeah. Let's see. You're going to make me look it up, aren't you? Dagger. And we have a box to open, too. Yes, you do. <laughs> okay, here we are. All right, so while they're digging, you're going to cast Identification on the dagger. <clears throat> All right. Um, well, it while it is somewhat magical, it's nothing too remarkable. It's a plus two magical dagger. Gives you plus two to hit, plus two damage if you use it. And um, I took the uh, the scepter thingy. I'm gonna see if it is magical by asking Rush. Can you identify it? Uh, can you at least see if it is magical? And if it is, identify uh, it. The scepter maybe... thingy. Where did you get the scepter? Thingy? Check magic. The uh, the goblin, the, the goatman shaman thing that okay, Jash kills. Um, so you just want Rush to do detect magic on it? First, to see if yeah, it is. It is magic. not magical. So I throw it away in disgust. <laughs> <laughs> was, I'm like, look, it could have been something you could have used, Rush. I was just thinking of you. but you know. well, I could have told you that. Look at it. It's not shiny. <laughs> Unlike you, who are very shiny with your massive quantity of gold that you are yes, loaded right. down. That's right. Yes. Yeah, if Look you missed right. last episode, Jash literally is loaded down with golden chains and gems and jewels <laughs> and as much gold as he can stuff into every available crevice on his person, comfortable or otherwise. <sighs> All right. Have we worked out a plan, Physic? Um. Yeah. I was just doing some basic calculations here. Uh, as it turns out, if you dig a big hole, it takes a lot. Lo Hold on, I'm gonna go up to the uh, two shamblers, and I'm just going to immediately cast, uh, <laughs> like, without explaining myself, I'm just gonna cast diminish plans on them to shrink them down. <coughs> okay, so you're casting which spell? Uh, it's uh, the opposite of plant growth. Okay, so you're going to diminish them. Yes. And as we have already established, being predominantly plant, um, that will that will work on them. Um, so, um, diminished plant will shrink them to about a third of their normal size. So they're about three and a half feet tall. You have basically <laughs> created gnome-sized shamblers. Yes. Did, <laughs> wait, did you tell them you... Mm, never mind. Ah, uh, they'll figure it out. Will they be uh, happy about it, I guess, is the question. Being semi-intelligent, I think at this point, <laughs> they get the benefit. Do they also get the fact that they might last longer because they're more compact, maybe? Need less chlorophyll? No. Oh, you know what? Uh, 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 there's a very specific point to that spell at the very bottom. Oh, does it kill them? No, it says this spell has no effect on plant creatures. Oh, jeez, are you serious? Yeah, it actually does specify that very clearly. So um, I can't shrink them down. Well, let me check something, because I'm not going to say no just yet. Um, maybe a little homebrewish coming out here, we'll see. Plant growth. If plant growth says the same, which it does... Um, have you ever cast plant growth on these? You haven't, have you? No. Okay. No. So at no point I said that plant growth would work? No. All right, all right. In that case, then I'll stick with it and say, it. no, that won't work. Okay. If I had actually allowed it to work the okay. other way at some point without realizing, I would have basically said, well, you know what? If I, if I called it wrong once, 
I gotta call it wrong in reverse as well. I can't. Oh well, I seem to be remembering. <laughs> <laughs> no, unfortunately, yeah, it, it's very specifically says no effect on plant creatures. That's right. Ah, uh, dang. Sorry, dude. Ah, uh, that's <coughs> okay. Uh, then, in which case, uh, we, we need we, we still need to be digging. It was a, a good uh, idea, though. We need to dig a smaller, a small tunnel. The, the larger the tunnel we dig, the longer it's going to take to get out of here. Um, uh, overall, it's just. The way that the way that works per unit, you want more you want more forward than you want out. Um, if you could all just be gnomes, that would be great. Uh, but seem to recall, I, I was I was thinking of moving the earth on my own. I, I have this habit of not trusting anything. But um, I well, well, physics. Okay, you're rambling again. Yeah. <laughs> Which is a thing he does. <laughs> we know generally the direction to escape, correct? Yes, yes. So if we just go in a straight direction, not following the tunnels, won't we cut a lot of time off? We could, but the issue with that comes to uh, discerning uh, the height of the tunnels, because some, some of them were slight uphills and slight downhills, and rejoining with a previous tunnel might be difficult that way, logistically. Well, we want to go, and I'm going to point, if memory serves, this right. way. Yeah, what Physic is pointing out is that this is not all flat. A lot of the tunnels have been kind of dipping and rising and stuff like that. So you, you don't necessarily... And I get what you're saying. You're basically saying, yeah. does that even matter, right? Right, yeah. Because if we're molding the Earth, it doesn't matter if it dips. We'll just dip with it or right. rise with it. I mean, The only or thing that right you would have it. to consider, if anything... Um, no, you know what? I will say nothing. Well, well there is uh, there is the <laughs> the river or the lake, mm. but we just I, anticipate I, that. I, I guess I guess the troubling thing is that if we're digging entirely all the way there, when we when we hit open pockets like we just hit here, I'm just kind of gesturing to the cave that we've ended up in after a week of digging. Um, when we end up in situations like this, this is what how many feet? And I'm going to start pacing out what like. 40 feet right here that we didn't have to dig. Oh, an awful amount. Of, a a yeah, lot so of space you didn't have to we, dig. Yeah. We save more time by going from opening to opening, following potential openings, I think, than actually cutting around the corner. Because if we cut corners here, we might end up digging extra to where there was a pocket over here that would have led us up there. It, it, oh, in all right. odds, it'll probably cancel out, but my fear is accidentally digging a little bit downhill and ending up further underground or vice versa digging a little too high and then missing a pocket and falling down into it well but over well wait i'm, I'm gonna walk over here and immediately see this opening and i'm gonna uh like this right here is several what is anyone following me no one's following me i mean nope <laughs> no, i'll go i'll go i'll go and check yeah anything to hurry this up please i mean this this is a good 60 feet of space that we can possibly circumvent just by going in this corner and going down southeast-ish. Great, let's do it. Because we do know that there's another pocket where the ballistas were set up, correct? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but if we, we don't know the exact dimensions to get there, it's it's it can be dangerous. It's when I'm, not that anything we do isn't dangerous, but uh, this is a logistical thing where if I overshoot, we'll be on top of it. We'll fall. If I undershoot, we might miss it entirely. If 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 we're slightly off with an angle, it, it can. Okay, we didn't uh, entirely explore the entire cave system. Uh, we we might run into something we didn't anticipate. That's true. I mean, I just. <sighs> I understand. The, uh, I, I guess save time, and this one looks a little bit more clear cut. But I, I guess my my main concern is if we do follow the path, we're going to hit that river, and what if those bridges did not? <laughs> All right, <then. laughs> we'll use <Okay>. the boat. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Use we'll that, that speedboat <laughs> that just happens to be there, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> What if the bridge is no longer intact? That's a whole other problem we're going to have to come across. Because yeah, there's plenty of stone, yeah, we can treat it. We can treat it like any other part of the tunnel and just undig, like replace it with stone. I can I can flesh that out. I can shape a bridge. 
There's why plenty don't why of, don't we no pun intended cross that bridge when we get there? Yeah. Unless the bridge isn't there, but we can build a new bridge. <laughs> There's lots of timber and stuff around here. We can yeah. build a new bridge. Yeah. Let's get out of the cave. The problem Please. is not us. The problem is the green dudes, right? They've served their purpose. They're done. Don't speak that in their native tongue, eh? I know um, they. I know they don't understand me, so I can say whatever I want. So that's what I'm gonna say. That's that's not. I mean, yeah, but I we can understand you. And I'm inclined to agree with you, Josh. The problem is, what Sorry. if there's four of them and they get angry that we had five of them killed for our purpose? Well, if we're the only survivors, we can just tell them they died in the glory of battle. Because that'll... That, they, they hate that. I'm just going to start walking away. <laughs> they won't know. Let's get out of the cave. Okay. Oh, okay. right, Physic, you do what you do best, and Marigold will supplement you. And uh, Jash and I will dig, I guess. I'm bedazzled. <laughs> uh, so what, uh, what are we going with? What option? And uh, I'll stand back here with the pretty girl who can't say no. I'm sorry, that was uncomfortable. Wow. <laughs> wow. That's just, yeah. She's already said it. <laughs> it, 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 it takes, it. yeah, she has to be hypnotized uh, just to eat. <laughs> um, okay. Uh, Jesus. Okay, um, so first thing I'm probably going to want to do is uh, I'll hit it with um, the spell that I suddenly recall having. <clears throat> right. And I'm sure Sass is in there just screaming. <laughs> so what are you doing? Uh, I'm going to soften the earth. Okay, so you're going to use make soften it easier earth. Because um, it's rock that basically will turn it into, like, soft clay. Mm-hmm. So soften earth. Um, let's see. So you are able to do 25. No, that's the range. Um, let's see. What's the cubic feet on this thing? 80 square feet. A 10 foot square area to a depth of 1 to 4 feet, depending on the toughness and resilience of the ground at the spot. Um, And the area is 10 foot square per level. Right. See text. Alright, you affect a 10 foot square area to a depth of 1 to 4 feet, depending on the toughness or resilience of the ground at that spot. Magical enchanted, dressed, or worked stone cannot be affected. Earth or stone creatures are not affected. Alrighty. Um, so what does it mean, Gore? Well, what, what it, it mean? means is you affect a 10 foot square area to a depth of 1 to 4 feet per your level. So you basically do a 80 square foot area. Um... So the way you guys are going to use it, it's going to be a little different. So we're just going to call it an 80 foot, an 80 foot square area and be done. Okay. Because that will be easier. Um, <laughs> no more math. So, yeah. We're not going to worry about the one to four foot crap. Um, so 80 square feet, you've got to decide how big the hole is going to be. And that's going to tell us how much you can actually tunnel out per spell casting. Uh, four to four by six, right? Four. By yeah, six. if we do a four by six, then the shamblers can probably squish into it. Uh, the shamblers can f- squish through a four by six, but it's a very tight squeeze. There'd be no way to get to change marching order with them, and they wouldn't be able to actually actively do any form of digging. Because well, they basically will be like forward. on all fours, crawling to get in a four yeah, by six. Yeah, yeah. So the humans will do it. We get Marigold and Jash and Rush and that's it, you know. And basically, get <laughs> try to get these plants to hibernate. Okay. <laughs> yeah, they'll rest. <coughs> so a four, so a four by six. Um, uh, what's your total square footage? Uh, so it's eighty per casting, and it's a level two spell. Well, that would be four by six. It's twenty-four, right? That's a level one spell, right? Uh, what shape? Now let me, uh, I'm trying. I'm trying to find the. I'm trying to find the spell. This spell list is too long. I no, know too many spells. Take some of these away. <laughs> yeah, erase erase many of your spells. Get rid of all of them because they're just annoying. Um, yes. Okay. So it's a level. The stuff. Yeah, it's a level two druid spell. Which means I can do it four times. Right. Which is eighty times. Four, which is three hundred twenty. 
320. All right. So it's a total, uh, a total 320, and you're doing it in a four by six. Yeah. So what is a so, four by six square foot? 24. Right. So 320 but divided by 24, right? There you go. So 13, 13 and a third. Uh, yeah, 13 and a third. So basically, you're doing uh, with that, you will be doing about that much per cat. Um, that much is what you're going to do with, with the um, per day, right? Uh, for yes. for just that spell. That's just for that spell. And then, if you use a stone, your other spell. Uh, stone shape. Uh, which I think is... Ah, uh, jeez, I have to look at it. Uh, finding it on Marigolds. Make life easier. Too many spells. Stone shape, here it is. And then stone shape, um, basically is 10 cubic feet plus one per level. So there's 18 cubic feet per casting for you. And that is a third level spell. So at mm -hmm. 18 cubic feet. So so Marigold can cast it four times. And I can cast it three. All right. So, so four, seven. five, six, seven times 18. Divide by 24. Seven times 18. Yep. Yeah. Divided by twenty-four is another five. So pretty much three thirteen. We can do nineteen per day. So basically, you're doing Rounded. twenty feet a day. Mm -hmm. Is a feasible, you know, um, with magic. <laughs> right, and and we can add another foot per day of just shut, you know, yeah, people yeah. grabbing and moving stones and stuff like that. So twenty foot a day is what we're going to look at. Okay. Okay. Um, so based on that, and I'm not going to just spend forever doing this, but we're going to just calculate this. So we are going to be looking at, um, so one, two, stop. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So I'm going to move you to where you will be after a week. I. After a week, you guys are going to be about here. And I have to move you guys into a little cluster. It'd make it easier for me to move. Didn't we contact me? Um. Jerusha, no! What? <laughs> um, you left her! There she is. Right, um. Well, I. And here's the thing. You guys have talked about contacting Ned many, many times. At no point has, everybody, has anybody actually said, we contact Ned and here is what I say. Yeah, because so, the only one who could do that is, is Marigold. So. so if you are going to contact Ned, you need to tell me that you're going to contact mm. Ned. Um, otherwise, you're not contacting Ned. <laughs> <coughs> right, during that time, do you want to do any more identifications? Do we have anything else to identify? I Don't didn't know, think do we did. Only what's in the box. What's in the box? What's in the box? We can't get open. The, I can't get the box open. The only one that now, can do I, that is I, somebody I, who can... I do have a question about one of Marigold's spells. Okay. Summon Planner Ally. Okay. It's lesser, and I know it has a cost, but we... If we, if we summon the creature... Would she be able to summon a creature that could, like, maybe dimension door the Shamblers out? Or um, would we have to... I mean, because that's... like I don't, what, spell, I don't, what spell are you talking about? Summon Planner Ally Lesser. Uh, I've only ever done it once, and that was the great... That was the normal one for the Sword Archon. Is that what the spell is called? Summon Planner... Summon Lesser Planner Ally, yeah. Here, I'll put it up. Um, okay, yeah, do that. I mean, I, I mean, I know it has stipulations and stuff. I just, I don't know like <laughs> all of the creatures of the the world, and if she could spe specify one. Hold on. Where are you? 
Yeah, I know summon monsters, summon nature's ally and stuff. Hold on, I gotta, I gotta select her a little bit. Right. Hey, you should have access to be able to do that. Yep. Yep. There you go. Because I know it has a cost. It has a big spell. Oh, so it's not summon. It's called Planar Ally. Okay, that's why I couldn't find it. Planar Ally Lesser, yeah. yeah Sorry, there my you bad. Go. All like, right. Okay. Um, yeah, so there is a huge cost. So basically, your deity will send an elemental or an outsider um, of the deity's choice, first of all. So... Right. It's not what you choose. Um, so it's going to be something that is Trithereonic. The spell is a general plea answered by a creature sharing your philosophical alignment. If you know an individual creature's name, you may request it. Um, you can ask the creature to perform one task in exchange for payment. Um, so basically, a task taking one minute per cast or level requires 100 gold Per hit dice of the creature, so one minute's worth of work will cost six hundred gold, right. um, or six thousand will buy you a day's worth of service. No, so I, I say that. I mean, I. I so what's I your question? I guess is the. Tritherion is all about self-preservation, right? right, and defense. Well, the shamblers are going to die trying to preserve themselves. So I imagine Marigold would call on her god to help keep those creatures from dying because they did a good noble <coughs> deed and don't deserve to die in this shithole. Right. If us humans, you yeah. can live forever. That's kind of what I was angling for. Like, mm. Because we can get out of here in whatever, however much time we, we can, and that's fine. I don't care if we spend no. 20 days. But... These things don't deserve to die by being stuck here after helping us. Yeah. That's kind of what I was going for. Gotcha. Um, okay. But it sucks because I'm not Marigold and I don't want to steal that thunder, so. I mean, obviously, you know, it, it's it's, a, it's a, a, a steep price to pay. Um, so... And that's not a thing that you can screw them out of. So do you, do you, first of all, do you have the means to pay it? So there was all that gold left over at, <laughs> that Jash could not take. Right, and Jash is laughing because that's why I'm asking. Because technically, <laughs> yeah. So you so, want to basically, we, and we did determine with the trash that Jash left behind, probably <laughs> would be enough gold to buy one day's worth of service, right? Right. Mm. Without... Dealing with whatever Jash is carrying because he's a selfish prick. That's right. <laughs> right. <laughs> there's plenty. There's still plenty back there. I didn't take all of it. There's plenty to go around. It's a good idea. I don't know if. I don't know if he's going to be able to help, but it's a good idea. I mean, we're not using what's back there anyway. Yes. Yeah. We're just going to leave it behind. Might as well give it a shot. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. With that. I mean, if, if we can't get the shamblers to get out in there and survive, we can get an extra day's worth of digging by something magical and awesome. Yeah. Right. For essentially free, since we're not using the gold that's back there. Right. Right. Um. <sighs> Here's the thing. I don't know that there's really anything that could be summoned... There's no Archon that would be able to really help with that. Not within her range. Okay. Um, I, let's, I think, from an extra planar standpoint... Um, uh, let's see... Let's just get a Zorn to eat both of them, go to the surface, and regurgitate. Right. <laughs> <laughs> um... I'd be fine with just getting an elemental to help for a day. That's probably about as much as you can really expect with what you're looking at doing. Because, I mean, okay. even something like a Justice Archon can't really help these guys. Okay. Um, unless... Let me check one thing. Um, 
Take them to the ethereal realm. <laughs> ethereal, yeah, <laughs> jaunt them. Because <laughs> because Dalitha's all about that. Yeah, spell. there's nothing <laughs> there's nothing that she can cast, nothing she can really get within six hit dice that can pull that off. Okay. Um, so the theory isn't bad. It's just the lesser version can't really make that happen. Uh, so. I mean, yeah, you could you can use that to summon um, like an earth elemental or something like that. Well, I mean, after two weeks, they look pretty bad, right? Yeah, they're so, very bad. They're almost on death's door. So, in desperation, I imagine we'd do that. Yeah. At the very least, it would speed us up, right? Yeah. <laughs> What was that thing that uh, that she summoned earlier? The uh... lantern. Yeah. What was that? A sunbeam of some sort? No. See, one of the th no, it, it has light, but um. Ah. Uh. I mean, you could summon a large earth. She could pull off a large earth elemental. That sounds ideal. Let's get Rocky Balboa in here. <laughs> get him. Get him some uh, drills for hands. <laughs> right. Yes, drills. Um, I mean, we're working at twenty feet per day. That'll maybe add however much it can add, and right. we'll just continue from there. Um, yeah. See, they. I mean, they have the ability to earth glide because um, they can slide through stuff, but that they can't take anybody with them. So, um, unless they're eaten. <laughs> <laughs> but for for that day, they can possibly tell us the right shortcuts to use. <clears throat> that you could you could have one as a guide for a day, yes. And then it can also possibly dig on the opposite end, so we meet in the middle or however far that. we. So is yeah. that what you want to do? You want to blow that? Yeah, to do it. Okay. So the ne the the next day, with the shamblers almost dead. All right, and nobody has any other items that they want to. Um, Yeah, uh, I guess I'd be uh, looking at making some health potions in the off hours. All right. What what components do you have for that? Uh, I'd need expensive ones, wouldn't I? Uh, well, and that's just it. Uh, unless you pass the herbalist down here, I don't know that you've got the gear to do it. Mm. Um, I mean, I've been collecting all kinds of nonsense, but what? Yeah, well, I, I don't know what you've really collected. Um, do you have notes? I know I have, I have like a white drop mushroom and like some other stuff, but I don't know exactly what I, I would need for it, I guess. is uh, The cure, cure spells do work on these guys. The problem is they're not injured. It's mm -hmm. The injuries isn't what's killing them. It's the same as like if you're starving to death, a cure spell won't help you. Yeah. Uh, if yeah. you're diseased, it won't help you because you're not actually. Okay. It cures wounds. These guys aren't wounded. They are basically just um, withering yeah. and dying from lack of sunlight. Yeah, and that's that's not really my my goal with them wasn't really for the shamblers. It was just so that we have them. <coughs> yeah, we're yeah. out. No, I, I hear you. But all right. Um. Okay. So another day. Uh, so if you use this dude, um, you will actually probably accelerate it. Uh, with the help of the summoned elemental, that will accelerate you to get you here uh, in one more day. And before he disappears, could he possibly tell us the quickest route out into the sunlight? Um, you know, just like... Well, let's see. Bypassing any unnecessary tunnels? Honestly, the quickest route is probably just going to be to follow the way out that you've been following. Okay. Um, okay. So that's what we're going to do. <laughs> Onward. So, um, once again, just to ask the question, because of the, it keeps getting thrown around, are you, because it is kind of integrally important to, Let's for me to Let's contact Ned. Are you, talk to, are you contacting Ned or not? Yes. And if so, what are you having said to Ned? Because this is like three episodes where it's like, we should talk to Ned. And then someone says something, and you, you should call mom. push it aside. <laughs> <laughs> we 
Which, as I said, so um, call your mother. All right, we contact Ned and basically say we are trapped in a cave, having killed goat people. We got Cecilia. Um, nature helped. Nature helped. Nature probably gonna die. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Someone else, please say something. And what are you casting? What spell? Uh, sending, right? So 25 yeah. words or less sending spell. Oh, jeez, yeah, I'm not... Yeah. Yeah. You, you got along with Ned the most. You you say it. Ned, That's what mom. I would say. Ned, it's mom. Ned, it's mom. <laughs> We're trapped in a cave. <laughs> East from where we left off. All right, you got six words. We got Cecilia. Uh, follow the goat tracks. Oh. <laughs> okay. Cecilia, is, Cecilia is safe. Yeah, Cecilia is safe. That's probably that, it. That's twenty-five. <laughs> okay. So instead of Ned, it's mom. <laughs> I just say it's mom. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, well, Ned, I believe gets um, gets to reply. Right. Is yes. he gonna bark? <laughs> um, no. Um, you just hear a reply that says, I am on my way. Oh. Should have fucking said that earlier. <laughs> said What's he gonna do? Unless he can turn into a mole, we're still screwed. Alright, oh, so. Right. Um. Which way you wanna go? Alright. Uh. Continuing the way from which we, we came, All probably. Right, then move thyselves. Why didn't you ask him where the hell he's been? Well, we could have used him. That's that's a sensitive issue that I'd rather not try to address in 25 words. <laughs> I'm going to make my way across as quickly as I can as to avoid getting eaten by the things in the water. All right. Oh, look, guys. Oh, wait, no, that's all, guys. Okay. They just came across, okay. <laughs> uh, and all of this tunnel here is full of crap, too, so I just hadn't filled it all in for you. All right, so let me just measure that out. Um, from there, you're looking at uh, one, two, three, four, five more days of excavation. Anyone doing anything else in those five days? Uh, we could really use the help of another elemental. <laughs> I, um, I can tell you this much. After one more day, your elemental, uh, your plant growth guys are too exhausted to do anything. They pretty much just collapse against the barricades. Uh, that's, not, that's not a good sound. That's, that's not a good sound. Is anybody where? Whatever happened to? Where's Miracle? <laughs> oh, there's Miracle. Okay, I oh, scrolled down. Ah, uh, do we have anything we can give up to get get another uh, elemental out here and maybe? Okay, let, let, let me let me let me ask you a question here. How <coughs> how much did that first one really help? A lot. Because I would I would know. Like. Okay, how, how long? How much longer do you think we got to dig it to get out of here? Uh, not terribly long. The elemental bot is... you basically did a day's worth on his own. Okay. So he did in a day what you guys could do in a day. Okay, so he's gonna. Oh, we got. Well, can we get out of here in one day? That's kind of a mixed bag. The elemental would be able to tell us. Uh, how much? How much would you say I have on me? Like money wise, actual <laughs> coin or value? Yeah, like value, because they're gonna ask me to um, use it. Well, so I want to know how much I think I have. I'm gonna say you've had the time. Do you? I for sure would have been counting it every spare second. Right. Yeah. So I, I want to you, you count all the coin. Um, yeah. So I guess the next question is, let's have a quick look here. Um. Um, 
you have a skill called appraise, right? Uh, um, sure. Which is a skill that allows you to figure out the value of stuff. I do. Okay. Um, so uh, give me an appraisal skill check for... Because it's not... Obviously, coin is easy to count, but... Right. Gold jewels and, um, you know, bracelets and things that have gemstones and stuff in. Okay. Um, so uh, send... Yeah, you're going to do a appraisal skill and send it to the GM thingy. So, uh, all oh, right. Whoops, I rolled it. Sorry, I don't know how to do that. No, it's all right. It doesn't matter. Um, I'm going to make a, a GM roll here. Okay. For my own, my own amusement. All right. I mean, these are some pretty <laughs> nice pieces that you've you've got here. Some really fancy stuff for sure. Some some of the nicest pieces of jewelry you've ever seen. Um, you could be carrying around as much as thirty grand's worth of stuff right now if sold in uh, Azimir. Oh, oh, okay, okay. What if I gave you uh, this nice shiny bracelet here? Yeah, see how nice <laughs> that is. Would this help? Uh, I guess I'm gonna roll an appraisal on the individual bracelet. <laughs> okay. It starts with an A. And what are you taking off? Person. Like a something that just looks gold and gaudy, or something with gemstones yeah. in it? Uh, no, something that looks no gemstones at this okay, point. Yeah. Just something gold All that right. I have could have a lot of, and just kind of go ahead. Um, Physic, give me an. Make it seem like I really want to help out. Um. All right. Uh, would I know? <laughs> I probably don't. Um, I don't care about this stuff. It's pro. I mean, it's a, it's it's an it's it's nice. Um, it's heavy. Might be worth five hundred gold. And how much did we need? Thousand for? Didn't we need six thousand? Six grand. Yeah. Uh, we're probably gonna need a little more than that. <laughs> you need six grand. So. <laughs> okay, so two bracelets then. Yeah. And that's Poss it? Possibly more than two bracelets. All right, what do you need? Tell me, show me what you need. Uh, what's what's 6,000 worth? And I'm asking Delith, who understands more. I mean, I'll this, take probably. off 6,000 worth-ish. What you think's about 6,000 worth? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I mean, have no fear. You'll know if the uh, when you try to pay the Archon or whatever it is. And uh... Now, the other really thing know. I will point out... Um, is and I hate the fact that Jade is not here because this really is a kind of a decision that she needs to make. Um, there's an XP cost, right? Well, it's <laughs> um, the problem with it um, is you're kind of making a direct request of your deity, right? I mean, it costs her a hundred gold pieces, which isn't a lot in the big scheme of things, but. Um, would Jane feel that this is worthy enough to pester her god twice in such a short length of time? Um, you know, that's that's the question. This isn't like a summoned creature. It could be creature. the death of these shamblers, though. So that's, you know, she's not here, so I'm going to say that collectively as a group, y'all need to think, just consider that and make the decision. Okay, so would Jane or would Marigold think that it would be worth it to s possibly sh save the Shamblers and get CC out of here faster? You kind of loaded that question a little bit, <laughs> <laughs> but I see what you're going with because I, I think that's kind of knowing the fanatic that Marigold is, but also shy when it comes to Trithereon. Like Trithereon's just so great, and I don't I don't know if I deserve that. Like. It's kind of mixed. <coughs> I mean, technically, she also has to be able to communicate with the creature once it shows up, too. Because it's like, you tap on Trithurion's door and say, Hey, buddy, uh, can you send someone to help? And he's like, Fine. You go down there. And then it shows up and says, Okay, what do you want me to do? Show me what you got to pay me. Mm. So, um, but... Showing, I don't have a problem using sign language for an elemental to basically say. Mm 
But yeah, it, the question is, would she do it? Because guards can be finicky when you pester them. And you are muted, Shaggy. I would say yes, she would do it a second time, especially after I tell her maybe Cecilia needs sunlight to get better in the head. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so Shaggett votes I yes. I will say that to her. All right, so Shaggett to vote for yes. Manipulate her. All right. I think yes, but we'll come to regret it in soon years. Okay, so you're going to say yes? That's two yeses. Oh, sure, yes. Absolutely. Okay, the eyes have it then. So she is going to summon right. another one. All right, okay. Um, well, it can tell you the quickest way out of here. Uh, it would be to draw a straight line from there to there, which is going to be four days. You can dig one, it can dig one at the same time, um, cutting it down to three days. So Even with know, Soften Earth? With Soften Earth, you have got three days to get out, minimum. And that would be taking a straight line from uh, basically going from here through the rock to there. That's the Look, fastest route out of if here. We, if we tell these shamblers not to move a muscle for three days... Maybe they'll survive that long? <coughs> Maybe. Because they won't use any energy? And then... We'll roll them out, maybe? I don't know. <laughs> but I think it's worth a try, right? Yep. You can do that. Yeah. Um, let's, let's go down to the wire here. Uh, from a physical yeah. standpoint, they're both... Um, the brown one is... Not particularly well off physically either. Mm. So whether or not their wounds and physical uh, physical state will play into it or not, uh, don't know. Oh well, we 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 would have healed. Yeah, them. we would have healed them but okay, as much as possible. Right, so you would have healed them. Fair enough. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You've had. I mean, you've had the time. It's just. Yeah. I'm not going to put words in your mouth. If you tell me you healed him, you did. If you didn't. No, you did screw it. the brown one. <laughs> no, no, we would have healed everybody. Okay, all right. up and okay. <laughs> All right, gonna so you're going to basically use days. the elemental. Um, well, so payment-wise, um, I can tell you that it seems like Jash is kind of overestimating his values a little bit. Uh, either that or the uh, elemental is on the is on the scam because uh, when it you know you basically offer it up what whatever, and then it just walks over casually to Jash and starts looking at him. And then it just Are grabs a, a like, grabs a necklace and starts to lift it off of his neck. Hi! Hey, it's not <laughs> the magic one, is it? Um, <laughs> there was six. Uh, one in six. Give me a number. Uh, four. No, it wasn't the magic okay, one. Okay, good. <laughs> <laughs> All that right, would have so been a problem. It lifts off one of the other necklaces and then... And... <laughs> disappears down into the earth. Fucking greedy bat. Um, what was the rock elemental going to do with him? Wait, who are you well, talking to? Where you him? It's not like a summoned rock elemental. I know, it's a... I know. I know. <laughs> All right, three days. Let's do this. All right. Okay. Um, oh, Shambler's be alive just enough to... Yeah, I would, I would basically suck. Be, I'd be casting cantrip light spells on him just to try and keep it comfortable for him. Uh, okay. Uh, ready for some fun. Let's let's let me uh, resize this map and get it all lined up, ready for you. We'll zoom in a good bit here. All right, let's. And Jane's gonna hate that she missed this. All righty. Um. Oh, you know what? Before I do that, I'm gonna change the audio as well. Get rid of that one. And no, I don't want that one. Uh... I'm also going to summon Nature's Ally for a, wol for a dire wolverine. Just put them in the crisper drawer. It'll be okay. <laughs> See if it'll help dig. <laughs> Also, also give the shamblers a couple electric shocks so they get a little, oh, yeah, yeah. 
You want to do that? There's a little lemon juice on there. (laughs) All right. As you finally break out of the entrance of the cave several weeks later. Several weeks? Yeah. What the shit is that? Um, You see, standing out there, what appears to be a chariot um, that has got six massive wolves pulling it. Standing what? in front of it is a dude that looks familiar, but this guy is at least probably mid 30s, 40s, has long blowing hair. He has got massive robes. He's got like the a huge, big kind of brimmed beard growing, but he is carrying a very familiar scimitar. Um, he also has like now like a crown with massive antlers on it um he pushes straight through between um Dalith and between Jash and picks up Physic and spins him around almost excitedly it's kind of like a little <laughs> bit of a scary thing as he's like <laughs> it's good to see you mother <laughs> so you got the call <laughs> and then he puts it down on the ground it's clearly Ned but it's 40 year old Ned at this point um, and he does not look the same he is the same height but he is aged he has got these huge big kind of flowing thick robes um, let's give you a, a, a glimpse of yes please do what he looks like please shall do, we yeah. yes, I will do see awesome. this can you see him? No. No. Oh, hold on. <laughs> I forget how to do it so that the players can see it. Is it like a journal thing? That's uh, like Control Z out. or something. Yeah, but Control Z doesn't seem to be working. Alright. Um, I'll just I'll just zoom in. It's good. <laughs> I don't even remember because I, I always thought it was Control Z. It's not all. He, he looks like Thor. Like a green Thor. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, he is a, um, you know, he, he's become um, very, very large and almost somewhat majestic. Um, he's clearly gone to somebody to make him some clothes or he's done it because now, as I said, he's got this thick green robe and he's also got a brown tunic underneath and these kind of huge big stag antlers on his forehead. <sighs> I look incredibly cross right now. <laughs> That's what um, happened to be the, uh, the, the 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 wolves that were uh, were pestering us earlier, I think. Earlier. The uh, howling. Much, much earlier with the howling. Yes. Oh, you mean when I heard the call? Yes. Um, much and has disappeared since then. Yeah, and... a lot has happened since then. I wish I could explain it all. I don't understand everything myself. Um, all I know is something came over me and I spent many, many days in some kind of strange euphoria. And when I regained my senses, I was, well, as you can see, with a pack of very large wolves. Um, living and foraging in nature. Mm -hmm. Um, Many times I thought to wonder where you had gone and what had happened to you, but other things have happened that are more disturbing to me that really prohibited me coming to you until now. Indeed, uh, I didn't know exactly where you were until I received your message. Hmm. You didn't happen to eat any little white mushrooms with a really large round head on the top and just... You didn't eat any of those? Oh, no, no, no. Those are uh, quite dangerous. Yeah. Just wanted to make sure. Okay. Uh, We're we're glad to see you again. Oh, shoot. Uh, And then I'm going to turn and run in to check on the shamblers. Uh, Um, They're definitely not moving. At all. But then they haven't done for two days. (laughs) Could somebody help me with these? And I'm going to, I, I guess. They've been not moving for two days. 
try and and I, I guess I I don't I don't know I need to move them out <laughs> into the sun. They need sunlight. They need water. Oh. <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, I guess I could help you with that. I mean, uh, they they're back in the cave. <laughs> they're yeah, they're, they they're still in the cave. Yeah. Well, are they alive? I mean, they haven't been moving for a few days. Maybe check. Uh, uh, Ned, Ned would. Ned, you're probably good with this. You've always been. Uh, come, come with me. I'm gonna invite Ned uh, on this. On um, this journey to save the. Uh, the okay, so Ned'll Ned will wa wander into the caves with you. Okay. I'm gonna stay on the outside with. Uh, the wolves and the rescued people. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> Just kind of nervously looking at the wolves. All right. Basically, on the way in, I'm going to start bumbling on and on about these Erythnulian worshippers and their nonsense and the the black, I guess, fog that escaped the tunnels and caved us in. And okay seeing maybe if he knows anything about it. Um, he doesn't really seem to pay much attention. Um, oh. You're taking him to the shamblers? Yep. All right, when he sees them, he looks and he's like, it is such a shame to see this state of nature's purest creatures. And he wanders over to one of them and kind of like reaches out to touch it. Um, the green one. Mm -hmm. And he says, if I was perhaps just an hour or two sooner, but I'm afraid this one has passed. There is little to nothing that can be done. And, and that one? No, no, this one, I'm afraid, seems to have... Uh, nature's light left him a while ago. We, we tried to get him out in time. They they helped us a, a lot. They're... Well, the best thing we can do now is drag them to the forest floor where they can be at home with nature. They would not have enjoyed such a dark and dingy place as this. They would have never called this home. I agree. And uh, I guess I'm going to almost laughably try and help move them. <laughs> All right. Um, Ned reaches over and grabs one and... <gasps> almost gets it to like lifted stage and you see him like begin to stagger step by step carrying the shambler like a giant baby in his arms like gritting his teeth oh man he makes it maybe five or six feet and then has to put him down can probably get the others to help hey, hey jash yeah what uh, help him out here oh yeah we're gonna we're gonna make sure they they're okay uh yeah yeah Right. Uh, the brown one is actually kind of mushy at this point. Mm. Remember, like most of the shamblers, when they yeah, truly yeah. died, they became like they, they became kind of mushy. The brown one is gone mushy. The green one is still sort of shamblerish shaped. But then, literally, he did only just pass. Like, I gave him uh, basically. <laughs> it was a fifty-fifty chance, and it rolled a fifty-one. <laughs> oh. <laughs> So it was like 1% too high. Dang um, it. But, um, okay, so someone want to help with him? Yeah, I, I went in there. Okay. Yeah. So between Ned, Dalith, and um, Jash, you're able to get the Shambler out. Um, I guess we'd put him over here, right? No, Where they were right all here. waiting. Yeah, take him over and put him down. Um... Uh, so you you obviously over there. You're over there. Is anybody else going over there to s say goodbye to the Shambler? <laughs> no, because I feel bad that they died. Right. 
I feel guilty. I'm not following. Right. Uh, Ned lays it down, and you see him place his hand on top of it. And then a faint kind of irradiated green glow kind of covers over the Shambler's body and it sinks down into the earth. Mm. And then Ned stands there and you see him kind of close his hands and begins to whisper underneath his breath. And shortly afterwards, you see a small sapling begin to grow out of the ground where the Shambler was buried. I'm going to lean over and look at Physic. Wait. Oh, did they die? Uh, no, no. He's just, uh, sleeping. Oh. <laughs> what are you talking about, Shh. Physic? What? Cash. Ned yes. looks at you and he says... They're dead. There was a young lady with you. Is that the girl, Cecilia, that you were all looking for? Uh, yeah. That's, she, that's what's she's, left of her, yeah. She's not right in the head. Oh. And, well, the other one, the half-naked man, he's uh, confused about who he actually is. Didn't we dress him? <laughs> yeah. So, um, they were in the cave? Yeah, they were taken prisoner by, uh... Orcs. And then well, orcs. Orcs, then these uh, men with, uh, I guess, cloven feet and sh- heads like sheep. Mm. Would they have been um, fawn or satyr or some other sylvan creatures, do you believe? Or perhaps um, something more sinister and uh, perhaps far more demonic sinister. or devilish? Uh, that pull up there is there's. Um, it's to Erath Nul. He's a evil Arathnul. deity. Of, yeah. Ah, uh, yes. A very uh, unpleasant god to follow, to be sure. There, there was a. Um, well, there was a creature we encountered before you left. Uh, with your calling, I guess. Um, it, it, it would suck up the bodies of the orcs and turn them into undead monstrosities. Uh, they were also respond. It was also, we found out later, responsible for these uh, friends of ours, the green guys. Uh, so we helped them, and in turn they helped us, and we got rid of that weird monstrosity. It was the plant was it a plant creature? I mean, it had green tentacles, right? Mm. Yeah, it was, it was plant-like, but also kind of like a, a cross between a plant-like warthog octopus thing with a much larger mouth. I see. But the shambling folk came and helped you of their own free will. Yes. Uh, yeah, we, we basically told them Where they the, could full, find the, the... the full truth, it turned out. Thank God. Thank, um, oh, oh, a Tritherion, I guess. Well, uh... If you can thank a god. I can only imagine that the young girl and the man that you say is confused what they must have gone through. Um, after all, if these creatures were worshippers of Erythnal, then they stood for slaughter, hate, malice, envy, all the worst possible human and natural and unnatural emotions. I can only imagine what they must have been put through in the time of captivity. It's no wonder that they uh, seem to have put themselves elsewhere and inside their heads. Perhaps in time they will recover. Uh, It's been two weeks and they seem to be about the same. But two weeks in the dark, um, perhaps two weeks in the sun may help. Well, yeah. uh, You you look good, Ned. Oh, Difference. Ned, that's right, yes. Um, so, is there another name we should call you? Ned is as good as name as I've heard, and the only one that has been uttered to me. <laughs> so, Ned it is. Uh, oh, okay. Have you forgotten your name? No. Not as such, I just hadn't heard it for quite a while. 
since I was a young man. Like a couple days ago. <laughs> <laughs> like a month ago, maybe. <laughs> a month is a long time in the time of Ned. <laughs> is, is, is that for protection? I'm going to point at his antler hat. <laughs> um, I really don't know. I woke up and it was there one day. Is it a part of your head, or is it just I on I don't you? think so. I just don't Haven't... feel that I should take it off right now. That's not creepy at all, but <laughs> I'm just going to kind of like... I understand. There are many things that have happened to me that I do not comprehend myself. <sighs> many I... things that are very familiar, yet even though I have familiarity with them and understand them, I don't know why. Much like the call that I heard. Um, come, let me uh, take you to meet my friends. Uh, of course, of course. I'm going to walk next to Jash as we return and I'm gonna say, I don't like this at all. Yeah, I don't either. He owes me three bracelets and a necklace. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to roll my eyes as I as just as this. <coughs> Alrighty. Um, yeah, so he goes back and climbs up on the back of the chariot and reaches out and grabs hold of these vine reins that seem to have been that he seems to be using and he says We have been traveling around the forests hunting down the vile and wicked things and dealing with them to try to make this land a more civil and safe place. Is this part of your call? or? Um, it just seems like the right thing to do. Uh, As I said, I, I can't easily explain all of this. A little outlandish. She looks like some kind of verdant lord seeking. I don't know. I, I mean, what have you exactly dealt with? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Should... things. Um, we fell upon a group of large, ogreish creatures that were wickedly and vilely taking great pleasure in rounding up some woodland elk and torturing them. We fell upon them fast and quick and uh, between me and my canine friends I think it was a dozen or so that we put to rest. Hmm. We have seen many majestic creatures that are strange and altogether scary but not vile or wicked just living their lives and um well following the natural path of nature there are many things in nature that may seem hostile and would attack but not from a wicked or malicious standpoint more from a well they just see you as food or as much as one hunter may hunt a rabbit kill it and consume it, some of these creatures would do the same to you. So, like, red ape creatures. Ah, uh, yes, those. They are uh, splendid creatures indeed. <clears throat> With a magical ability to grow to monstrous sizes when they feel necessary. It is a, a wonderful, not a natural, but a magical defense mechanism that has been bestowed upon them. And, and are they, uh, Malicious or just hungry? In your experience, um, territorial. I've, I've found them. Yes, you're probably correct. They are very territorial, um, but not altogether evil at all. No. I'm just gonna go silent at this. <laughs> well, um, I love. You first. <laughs> oh, I was just going to ask. Well, and you, what have you been doing this uh, 
this past <laughs> growth cycle of mine. <laughs> uh, that was Marigold and Rush. Well, um, I imagine Marigold's probably happy to see you. Rush is probably feeling a little frustrated about some things. I'm happy to see you. I'm frankly proud of you. Um, it's It's been a heck of a journey. Uh, it's 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 turned out to be a lot more than I sized it up to be. I see. We uh, I mean, you pretty much know what we've been up to. We uh, we encountered these uh, what did you call them? Fawns? Sets? No, I, I wondered if they were fawn or satyr, but it does not sound like. Orn or Satyr would not worship a Rithnor. Well, whatever these these goat beast things. They were more likened to Minotaurs. All right, he climbs down and wanders into the cave because there were a couple of dead ones near the entrance. Yeah. He goes in and you see him kind of crouch down and look at them and lift one of their heads up. And he sniffs it, and then he like slumps it back down and comes out, wiping his hands down. No, I fear that these are some kind of strange, twisted, vile creatures. Most definitely not anything of a uh, natural race of creature or anything that um, I would consider of the forest. Not naturally, anyway. Nothing sylvan. Not like a fawn or satyr or uh, any of those creatures. Well, well, suffice it to say, we are... We encountered these guys and <coughs> ran into them on several occasions trying to ascertain their strength in numbers and we found that we needed aid so we returned to um, the Agashi tribe or we were planning to and that's when we encountered those vegetable plant creatures and uh, shamblers shamblers it's and the shambling folk and then they needed help with some of their some of their ilk turning undead and we helped that we went to an island and we dealt with them and we came across a, 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 an el- a, a, a what was this was an elf house I guess yeah yeah the home of a of an elf who was who was studying things yeah, very much like I have been it was a little eerie <laughs> and then uh, we got the uh, shambling vegetables to basically uh, help us deal with these creatures and then we got stuck for several weeks. Digging ourselves out. Ah. Uh, we there was a giant, a giant avatar of a Rithnal that we dealt with, and when we killed him, an avatar. Yeah. The yes. Was, um, he, was he a minotaur? Yeah, 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 something like that, but very, very large. Yeah, uh, towered over our uh, over our shambling mound friends who. Doesn't Who? sound like what I envision Erythnal be, but well, that's the thing. When we defeated this, this so-called avatar, there was a a, a bit of a shaman who was uh, shouting commands to it. When it when it died, after it fell, it how do I say? It? Folded open upon itself, revealing some kind of dark miasma. Which shook the cave Black and energy. Yeah. It shot to the ceiling and spread like a cloud of poison. And then we got caved. Hmm. But yeah. you're out now. Yes. You rescued young Cecilia. Yes. So far. <laughs> so, um,. What now? You're to find your way back to your city in the mountains, leaving the forest far behind you? Absolutely, yeah. Gotta get paid. (laughs) He kind of looks at you in a grin slightly and says, "Hmm, Seems like you may have gotten paid already. (laughs) Well, this is just a bonus. How's it pay? We can call it. 
No, no, um, I, I understand. But I guess that is the plan. I mean, uh, although honestly, if she's not in her right frame of mind, there's no point bringing her back to the city. I mean, what good would she be? Well, we need proof, don't we? Well, I'm sure that her loved ones would like her back in any state. He gets it. Ah, <laughs> uh, I guess. But yeah, I guess that is the plan. We head back to the Agashi tribe and work our way back from there to the Wood to the elves. And I have met this Agashi tribe a second really? time. Yes. Did they I burn have. the? Did they burn the bridge like they said they would? They did not. Okay. Was that what you were doing? You seemed pretty intent on it. Um. Well, I'm not entirely sure why they didn't, if they said they did, but when I passed by several days ago, the bridge, such as it was, was still there. We we beseeched them to help, and they said they would just destroy the bridge instead of cross it. I it did seem that they were rather fearful of something. I guess we put their minds at ease. So you're going to travel back to see them? Uh, yeah. Well, if yeah, I you, think so. Uh, I suppose I could travel with you as far as there, and perhaps we can at least let your young companion ride up here so that she doesn't have to walk. That would be, that'd be good. He says, well, um, yes, bring her on over and sit her down next to me. I'll make sure she stays quite safe. Okay. Uh, Marigold would probably do that. Okay, so you're going to get her and help her onto the cart. He just books it. <laughs> <laughs> Pace. Just out. Turns into a nasty evil thing and goes, Sucker! Yeah. <laughs> okay. Alright, I guess that's where we're, we had the uh, west, right? Alright, you notice he kind of keeps um, glancing at Rush. And then, right as he's about to, whoosh, you know, usher his wolves on, he looks down and he says, What's troubling you, little fellow? <laughs> you don't seem altogether happy to see me. Yeah, don't let it bother you. As well, um, of course it does bother me. I'm not altogether understanding what I may have done to upset you, but I'd certainly like to apologize for it if I have done anything. Doesn't matter. Everybody else is happy to see you. That's what matters. Well, perhaps at some point you might feel... Clearing the air is something of a a weight that you could lift from yourself. If not, of course, it is your choice to remain silent. All right, with that, he's like, well, um, shall we go? Lead the way. Alrighty, okay. And um, you begin traveling off at a fairly slow kind of pace. Obviously, he's going at your pace. So. <coughs> All right. Um, is there anything you guys want to do? Quiz? Talk to him um, before you get back at least to that area? I mean, it's about a week's worth of travel. I'd just be inquiring as to so these ogres. Uh, how many arms did they have? Um, just two apiece. Okay. But um, very big and very muscular ones. Right, right, right. Uh, about the, their height, their height. Uh, the, oh. the locale in which they lived was it was it more of the uh, more the thick temper well, we, force that they we didn't to the come clearings, upon or? them in their home. We came upon them of a kind of like a um, a clearing. 
mm. a couple of days south from here. As I said, they had cornered a couple of elk and, you know, hunting for sustenance is one thing, but these had cornered them and were taking great pride in injuring them and hurting them and inflicting much pain. Mm. Hey, oh, physical. I have, I have a bit of a theory of the, the land down here and maybe your part in it. It seems that, as you're mentioning, many of the things plaguing the lands aren't necessarily of a the natural state and that was part of my curiosity leading into it because uh, the demise of, of societies down here seems to be I mean though it was long ago um, from malice of outside parties and, and some kind of badness or sickness in the realm uh, which is to say uh, perhaps the reason why we can't more naturally get along with the lands uh, that the people of the mountain I'm referring to uh, is because the lands aren't naturally level or in a good state and, and you were saying that you felt the urge to um or, or compels to rather heal the land of, of these these uh, uh perhaps uh, malevolent forces and um you said something about making it more civically inclined um i'm just i'm curious perhaps perhaps there's a turn of events happening here that's a little bit bigger than i had in mind um that I can say inequivocably you are correct there is an imbalance in this forest one that needs to be rectified but will take many many decades to do so oh uh, physic yeah what about the wizard's notes oh yes yes, yes. and I'm gonna Maybe pull out the uh, <laughs> in the book <laughs> Ned, we found a box that we can't open that this wizard elf was investigating the lands. I don't know if you can speak old and elf, but, uh... <laughs> Maybe you could decipher it and find a code? Or a way to open the box? I'm, like, occasionally jumping up onto the edge of the cart and, like, handing him stuff. And then <laughs> okay, so you want to give him the book? Yeah, yeah. Uh, he glances at it, and you see him kind of like looking at it and nodding. And and it would look like he's actually following it, like he is able to. Rush. I don't have the box. Rush does, right? Rush? Yeah. Maybe you can open the box, you know? Oh, so you want the box? I haven't been listening to anything you've been saying. But you want to open the box, right? Maybe he can do that. Oh, sure, why not? I dumped the box out on the ground. <laughs> there you go. Have at it. Right. Um, okay, I'm gonna pick up the box and scramble over to Ned. Okay. He looks at it and says, "So." Seems to have like a three-tier lock system. None of which I really understand. I think you have bigger problems than this. Problems. Yeah, yeah. It's just been a it's been a curiosity. I'll tell you what. Address the problems that matter most. We'll see what we can do with this box later. Right. <laughs> and I'm gonna just take the box and scramble back over to Rush and hand it over. All right. We'll stuff it back in the knapsack. Uh, what are the problems that matters most, Ned? Because I don't know what those are. He says, well, much like this place has problems, it's imbalances. It's pretty obvious to me that you have some imbalances that you need to address. Uh, we 
rescued the people we said we would rescue. I no offense to you and Physic, but the rest of us don't really care about the state of the nature down here, considering okay. the state of the nature. I, yeah. I'm, I fully understand that. So we're happy, no? Are you? Are you? You're happy. Well, I'm relieved that we're... I get a sense of... Since I've been down here, one of the things that's happened is I suddenly seem to be very in tune with every entity, every being. I can tell when the simplest flower is sad. He said, um, that's why I questioned your young friend Rush, because I can sense a undeniable amount of animosity and frustration. It Good job, Sherlock. Be, um... <laughs> present and I can sense that the old man behind us is full of internal conflict um yeah and Cecilia you is seem to have some serious anxiety about something although um, I wouldn't like to hazard a guess as to what it is yeah but but what I'm anxious about isn't necessarily making me unhappy I mean a part of me is okay especially since we're heading in the right direction now that we've encountered everything that we said we would encounter and I did my due diligence and couldn't find what I was necessarily looking for I mean uh, we, we know Jash here is super happy what with all he's carrying <laughs> yeah absolutely about to be happier too well Marigold has her friend back such as she is so I uh, <laughs> she is. <laughs> so, uh, uh, yes, and I understand. I... Um, some uh... people can be rudimentally happy with many shiny objects and wealth beyond their wildest dreams. But even the richest man can be miserable without friendship, without peace, without tranquility in their lives. Uh, I see. <clears throat> but never, never mind. We'll, well, uh, well I, 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 will, I will ask this last question of you oh, yes, to of sate my own curiosity. In your travels, did you come across other signs of the wreckage of the dirigible ship? Uh, like he other of, He kind of looks at you and grins. And he says, No... I don't think there's anything that you have to worry about. <laughs> Can I sense motive? That's sure. Kind of... <laughs> he knows. Oh, the bastard knows something. <laughs> he knows you suspect him of being some crazy wear monster thing. <laughs> he knows. <laughs> my, my sense motive is really bow. Oh, shoot. Yeah. Oh, he's clearly out to get you. You must get paranoid <laughs> okay. now. No, um, no. Um, I mean, you know, he just he just stares at you intently, and then gives a little bit of a smirk as he says it, and then very quickly cuts his eyes away from you. All right, I'm going to go into a state of contemplative silence <laughs> as I digest the creepiness that is now Ned. <laughs> And then I'm just going to get further into a conversation about the different cultures of the realm. And... <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay. So um, we're going to basically, we're going to fast forward over the next several days of travel. Um, let's see. Where is the bridge? I can find it. There we go. I'll have to just resize this. Oh, and we're missing your old man, too. Let me go fetch the old man. Lazy <laughs> bugger. Um. All 
right, there you go. Okay, yeah, so you get to where the, the edge of the bridge is. After about, as I said, it's about a week or so to get back to there. Now, during that week, um, some weird stuff happens. Um, you find edible plants seem to just be everywhere. They just seem to be bushes of berries and little plants that are full of nutrition here, there, and everywhere. Um, you also notice that absolutely no hostile animals or anything come anywhere near your camp. Um, all in all, it's a very kind of tranquil and peaceful journey. Nothing nasty seems to come out to get you at all. Not like in the past. It's almost like there is some semblance of balance starting to make sense here at the minute. Whether it's because there's a massacred dead orc camp not too far from here, or whether or not there's an entire tribe of wicked goatmen that worship Derethnal not too far from here that are all slaughtered, and maybe just anything with any common sense knows this is not a nice place to be right now. Um, <laughs> it could just as easily be that. Um, but or generally it speaking, dead. it's very peaceful. Yeah. Um, as you're traveling down, you know, in that direction, a couple of things Ned says that are kind of like suddenly out the blue. He says, I know that this will not be the last time we travel together. We are destined to meet once more. Uh, when that happens... Physic, I must, and he specifically looks at Physic at this point. He says, I was hoping to get you and your friends into come some form of harmony. That's clearly not going to happen. So I have to look at you and ask you to make me a promise. If when the next time we meet, something should happen, and I should find myself at odds with something, no matter what happens, you must promise me that neither you or any of your friends will try to intervene. I'll never ask anything else of you but this. Promise me that if something happens, you or your friends will not try to intervene. No matter what the circumstance. Is this promise more important to you than your life? Um, indeed. Because it would more certainly cost you your lives. And frivolously and pointlessly so. You, you're not going to ask all of us to make such a promise too? Because, I mean, if I, we're not going to be in harmony... In truth, could... I don't believe that any of the others amongst you, no offense, but would have any level of sincerity where I'm concerned with that promise. I think your personal motives would go beyond where even if you said the right words right now, I don't know that when it came down to it that it would matter. Uh, mm. I could respect that. I just... I mean, physics is not exactly in control of us, so if something were to happen... I understand. But while... He may not be in control of you. I believe he would be the one, if any, that no matter what happened, would honor my wishes. I don't know that I could say the same for the rest of you. You have my word. Oh. It's as best I can... Best I can. Just 
don't do anything stupid. There's, um... Nothing that I've done, really, has been by choice. Things have happened, and they ha they just seem to occur. I just seem to be caught up in the story, as it were. Right. But don't do anything stupid. <laughs> <laughs> yes, this is, um... I don't mean to offend any of you, but clearly, Rush has no interest in finding peace with me. Jash, I understand that you are driven by things more important to you than friendship or compassion. Well, that doesn't mean I'm not a friendly guy. I just <laughs> want my things. Precisely. Yeah. And Dalith, well... Mm. Mm. There's nothing I can really say out loud, is there? What do you mean by that? What's it mean? I just, just I just yeah, really yeah. mean that he is conflicted. When it came down to it, he may make decisions to save your lives that may interfere with things. He may be more likely to act in a way that he thinks he's acting in the best interest, but it's more... He may do something to help the rest of you and put himself in harm's way. And this is why I ask, should anything happen, that you are not to intervene in any way at all. <sighs> Nothing may come to pass. Are you just going to stay that vague? I mean, if we're going to meet again, you know we're heading in a particular direction. But if you're not coming with us to the Agashi tribe... If I understood it better, I would explain it better. It's not so much things I know, more of feelings that I have. I don't you... understand it enough myself, let alone to expect anybody else to understand it. All I know is, I was born in a specific place for a specific purpose. Events have happened throughout my life, short as it is, that I feel have happened time and time and time again. And you don't want us to interfere because interfering will break the cycle? Something within me says that towards the end of my life, I may not meet a particularly good end. And if any of you happen to be there at that time, whatever happens to me may befall you should you try to get in involved. Though I would just ask that you avoid getting involved for your own sakes. For I feel that it is something that is destined to happen and cannot be subverted. Well, you didn't yeah. ask it as a so physic. It's on. I mean, if if you, I, I'm asking it of all of you. But out of all of you, I just feel like physic is the one that I can expect. So, regardless of what personal feelings he has, regardless of what attractions to get involved that may be there, he is the one I believe can probably respect my wishes to ignore all of those things despite what enticements may be there and do what I ask him for no other reason than I've asked him to. Uh, I, I, I have to ask, um, you, you speak a lot of these faded things happening to and for you, uh, grooming you almost, um, when we mentioned an avatar earlier, you lit up. Um, you mentioned a retinal. Hmm. But we and mentioned an avatar thereof. Yes, I... 
I have not heard of an avatar of a Rithnal that looks like a ginormous minotaur. Does it seem off to you? It does. It seems very strange. Perhaps, it, perhaps they were grooming the wrong uh, the wrong avatar there. Um, are, 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 are you an avatar, Ned? I don't think so. I mean... Even so, you have some sort of favor here, and um, I I guess it's just... Do you know which voice is leading you? Um, doesn't seem to be a voice. Seems to be more of a fated calling. Right, that's that's what I was implying. (laughs) It's not like a voice speaks... I've I've been terribly poetic in the month I haven't seen you, Nick. (laughs) It's been bad. He even wrote you a poem. It's somewhere. It's somewhere. <laughs> Where did you put it, actually? Uh, it's. I, I buried it under a tree with. Never mind. Oh, it was a red tree. <clears throat> no, it was, a, it was a regular. It was a regular tree, but I. I I'm sorry. I'll, I'll shut up, Tristan. I, I apologize. It's okay. It's okay, Dallas. It's okay. Ah. <sighs> which does bring me to one. Other, thing that I would ask, and. In exchange for doing this or making me this promise, I'll more than happily open your box for you. <laughs> to be truthful, I'll open the box anyway, but as a sign of goodwill, <laughs> you could do this one thing for me in exchange. There's a, there's only uh, Ned, there's only one thing in this entire world that would force me to interfere. Any other thing that happens, I will not, as promised. But if that one thing happens, I, I can't go against, you know. All I can say is, if this happens, whatever reason may be there to, to draw you in, probably will be. You mustn't fall for it. You must deny it. You must allow what's supposed to happen to happen and not get involved. But... Under any form of trickery or goading. But it's my family, Ned. I understand. I, I can't if if it. Did you see how pulled you are with the compulsion of your family? But but it, would it would it be? I mean, you said goad, right? So would it be a trick and not legitimate, or would it be the reason? Would it be legitimate? <sighs> can't say. Because if it's a, if it's a trick, well then I will just choose to ignore it. But if it's not a trick, I I can't I can't I have to. The circumstances will not be of my doing, and I won't know exactly what I, what is happening. It's just something I have a feeling about. Okay. And I believe that we are fated to meet again, and when we do, something dire will happen. And when it does, you must stay out of it. You must not get involved, no matter what. No matter what the cost to yourselves or to me. Okay. Well, uh, in return for this favor, might I ask something of you? Uh, uh, yes. Uh, and what I was referring <laughs> to was not actually that when I said about the box. Yeah, yes, yes. Uh, I, my, my perspective, as, uh, as much as I try to uh, influence and, 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 grow that perspective uh, seems to be incredibly short-sighted to this sudden burst of wisdom you've had in your last uh, growth cycle. Uh, So if you wouldn't mind maybe and I'm going to pull out my my personal my personal book Mm -hmm. and I'm going to like uh, just maybe 
filling in some of the gaps. What gaps? Uh, I'm, I'm sure I've missed quite a lot. Uh, I'm, I'm trying to understand this land as much as I can. And you've been born into it. Whether or not you actually understand everything that's happening around you, you, you have a certain empathy towards nature beyond anything I've seen with the other druids in the family. Uh, so if you could, I don't know, maybe just not so much proofread as just help fill this out a little bit. Maybe I'll between now and the next do. time I see you. I'll see what yeah. I can do. I appreciate it. Alright, um, and with that he says now, uh, in regards to your box, should anything happen to me, I would like you to make sure that I am buried. And I would like you to plant this on my corpse. Can you do that for me? And he hands you what appears to be a small wooden box. Right. Now, if you'd like me to uh, open that box of yours, I suppose now would be an appropriate time to do it. If you want. I guess that's really up to, uh, to rush over there. Well, precisely. I guess I'd dump the box back out again <clears throat> alright okay so he climbs down places both his hands on top of it it's a huge big flash of green light cause <clears throat> and he goes there you go that should suffice I, I take it from Ned and in front of everybody open it up and look inside alrighty um so inside the box um there are three things. There is a bottle containing some kind of thick oranges liquid. There is a scarlet blue gemstone, probably about about the size of a golf ball. Um, and there appears to be a my own writing okay yeah and there appears to be a intricately carved wand Ooh. I'm, gonna, I'm gonna look at the three items and then at Ned and, uh, thanks I guess oh well you're welcome you only asked me to open the box for you. Well, I mean, how would you do that exactly? We've been trying to figure I, that out for a while. And... Again, it's going to seem completely boring and cliche, but I don't know. I just knew that I could do it. And, and do you know what these things are? Or is that just beyond the scope? Because it's appreciated nonetheless. Um... At the moment, I don't. Okay. <laughs> Your life just dances on the wind, doesn't it, buddy? <laughs> he says, if only you knew. <laughs> he says, quite honestly, I feel like I am traveling through life with absolutely zero control of anything I do other than these brief, fleeting moments where we meet. Aren't we all? Uh, and anything else, guys? Or is this where we part ways? What, what, what's in the box? I'm going to show you. <laughs> yeah, alright. Does he? Okay, do we know what this is? Does he know? 
One thing is a wand. Uh... Okay, who cares? Next. <laughs> it's orange liquid and a bottle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Snooze, snooze. What next? What's the gem? What does it do? Is it what's it worth? We don't know. I don't think if Jax's this look like. All right, can we ask? Maybe he know. He know. He apparently knows he, he, everything he, he, else. He, he, he I did. literally just. You did. saw he everything just we just saw, dude. <laughs> <laughs> he blacks I mean, out sometimes. Do we have any exciting, pearls okay? left over, or no? From yeah, we necklace? should. We should have three left, I think. Well, you can see if they're first if they're magical rush or is. The, are you angry at us too? Come on, Rush. It could be useful. So suddenly Ned shows up and everybody's just like, oh, hey, even though he like left us in the middle of a battle. And I'm not allowed to be a little miffed about that and a little confused as to why everybody is okay with that, but it, it's Suddenly been over, I'm angry at everybody? Well, it's been over a week, and you've been standoffish, it seems, to everybody. And why not? It seems like no one in this party has any loyalty to each other. Uh... Mm. I'm not going to open that whole can of worms, but I would like to say what is in this box. So maybe you can help with that. I don't really care. Him coming back, uh, he's going to leave again. Uh, I wrote him off weeks ago, to be honest. At least there's no lines to read between with you, Josh. You got it. And I'm going to identify all three of the items with the pearls. Okay. Yes. <laughs> all right. So there's an elixir of fire breathing. Ooh. A scarlet blue iron stone, which is plus two intelligence. And a wand of cure serious wounds. Yeah, boring. You can have them. And Josh, <laughs> Josh turns back around. <laughs> huh. I'm, I mean, thank you, thank you, Rush. Yeah, yeah. That was no problem. Uh, and as you say that, Ned says yes, thank you. Mm. Wand of Cure Serious Wounds. Mm -hmm. It has six charges left in it. <laughs> okay. And then in the Ion Stone, basically, whoever's going to use it lets it go near their head and it will flow around their head, like, magically. Um, all the time it's up there, you have a plus two intelligence. And if you don't, if you can't <laughs> figure out what to do with an elixir of fire breathing, well, you probably shouldn't have it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I love the fact that the iron stone for plus two intelligence does, I mean, no one really uses intelligence, but I can see why a wizard would have it. That yeah, makes no. sense. Yeah, okay. And uh, <laughs> it would probably take the intelligence rock <laughs> okay you want to be smarter you can be smarter i mean I'm not, gonna, I'm not gonna stop yeah. anyone from taking great that's all we need that's all he's about so put, put that put that in your in your list yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> okay all right so who's taking what or is anything just going back in the box and back in the bag uh, to replace the wand, I used to have maybe I'd take the wand. God, you're so greedy. <laughs> I'll take okay, the, I'm just, I'll I'm take just trying everything. to be helpful. <laughs> yeah, to be he's helpful. the greedy one, not me. <laughs> and hey, you know, a, a potion of, an elixir of fire breathing. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, who wouldn't like a gnome that can breathe fire? <laughs> it's a way to make a living. Honestly, and I hate having to say this, but I think Jash should have the elixir of fire breathing. Yeah, I do. I do too. But he, he, he gets... wouldn't. He wouldn't think that. He's like, Duh, I don't care. <laughs> I'm gonna pick the rock up, put it up, and just be like, Oh, and Jash, makes... you should probably have this. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, oh. it's technically you breathe fire, and you're close. Or marigold, we can give it to marigold because she gets yeah. it occasionally. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Have her breathe. Uh, I think ah. she'd rather she. I because Jash wouldn't want it. I wouldn't want it. 
I wouldn't okay. really care. <laughs> I'll give it to Miracle. All right, write it on a yeah. sheet then. Um, as we walk on, I would kind of scoot up, walk next to Rush, and just kind of be like, "Look, Rush, I get it. Believe me. Oh, but he left us at the worst possible time, and here he is now thinking that he can just save the day. And honestly, I don't really like what he's saying or kind of the vibe I'm getting from him, which is why I'd rather just get away from him as soon as possible. I don't like. I don't. I just something feels different. Something feels off with him. Are you kind of picking up? that at all? I've learned not to question it. It's just... Nothing ever makes sense. Ever. Well, the way I... I just want to get back to Azimar. Get Cece the help that she needs so that I can go back to being no one. Yeah, well, it seems like we're on the same page. What? Except I'm going to go back to being the champion of the fight up here. Uh, much love. Appreciate it, bud. But Take I think, look, off, hit your height. we made it this far basically without him. I say good riddance. Well, and apparently we're not done yet. All right. What time is it? All right, well, uh, Ned basically, because you're right here, he says, the Agashi tribe is just on the other side here, as you know. I can't cross that. Is there so, a reason? Um, primarily, there's no way it's going to hold the weight of these wolves yeah, in this yeah, yeah, yeah. cart. Um, okay. I said, <laughs> and there are other things that I have to t do. Um... Mm -hmm. I'm glad that things came to light. Um, as I tried to say before, if I had any control over what happened, I wouldn't have left when I did, but I didn't. It was days later when I realized that I wasn't with you anymore and I was with, the, with this pack. I understand that Jash and Rush hold animosity towards me for that. I don't blame them. Things are on a much deeper level than I can possibly explain. To be honest, why somebody so... minded so came down here in the first place is beyond me. Yeah. But... Try to make them understand that it wasn't intentional. I had no choice. I had no free will in it. Any more than I have any free will in anything that's going to transpire over the next few months. You know, I don't like when you say things like that. I gotta admit. I understand. Yeah. I wish I knew a way to explain it I mean, better. To but be I fair, don't. when we found, is when we found is. you, when you cannot take care of yourselves, we knew that this would not be a forever thing. I mean, the elves told us as much. They said he was not fated to be with them, but that doesn't mean that they were. he was going to be with us for the entire time anyway. So I don't understand. Yes, you left at a time we kind of needed you, Ned, but I was honestly expecting it. This I, I wasn't expecting you to be with us forever anyway, especially when you started aging like a freak. No offense. You know, oh, you know. none taken. For freaking aging. I mean, it's a not very, something I've ever experienced natural, before. A very but, natural freak of nature. Because I mean, <laughs> I'll be honest, Ned, you scare me because I don't understand you. But I get the sense you have similar. Um, there's things you don't know about yourself, so. While. Well, yes, while you are on the outside looking in and not understanding what's happening, I'm having to live it on a daily basis. Right, which... So, I don't understand it. But, regardless of whether I understand it or not, things happen. Right. And, and... If we're, if we're going to meet again, and you think we're fated, well, 
All, all I know is we are fated to meet one more time. Well, I'm not a, exactly looking forward to that, but that's not going to you. I mean, we're going to do what we're going to do when we head home. So, yeah. That's all I got to say. But, but besides, you look good. Uh, <laughs> it's scary, but... <laughs> At least you're not trying to kill us, is what I'm saying. Uh, you know, and if, for for a rifleman like myself with seven bullets to spare, you know, it's good, good enough for me. At least for all the times that I was able to be with you and help you and fight alongside you, at least fate granted us those things. I personally like to count my blessings of the good times we had and not look at the one or two things that happened that may not have been to everybody's liking. It's a very sensational and forward way of thinking. But yeah, you have an interesting philosophy that I think is born out of your very interesting existence, but I understand that you didn't have control over leaving, apparently. But to say that it was a small low point in all of our relationship with one another or our time together the shamblers died the shamblers did you entered into an agreement with them you fulfilled your part of the agreement they fulfilled theirs it's a shame it's a tragedy but they made a choice and you made a choice That's true. We I'm sorry if you there. seem to blame me for every single thing that bad has happened to you because I was not there. Um, I don't... All I can say is if that is the way you choose to look at things, then this is, this is the way you're going to choose to look at them. The times when I chose to fight for you and almost died myself. I hold no animosity towards any of you. I made those choices. Uh, yeah. Apparently, Gore, your mic is, is acting up. Oh, really? Yeah. Uh, That's getting a little distorted and loud. On your side or just on chat side? No, chat's, chat's saying so. Okay, let me see. He almost right. fitted a couple of times. There I turned it happened. off and turned it back on. <laughs> I don't know if that helps. Oh. Well, it does uh, bizarre. Better? Bizarre. Better? Oh, you're definitely, you're definitely a lot louder. Better. So. Uh, okay, I don't know why it suddenly jumped up in volume. Oh, no, they're saying it, now they're saying it's better. Okay, good deal. Hi. Right. <coughs> okay. Okay, there you go. Maybe I accidentally turned a button and pushed it up. No. This is a game. I had no control over anything. I, the, anything that happened. I have apologized for having to leave. I wouldn't have done so given a choice. If you can't look beyond that, I understand. I still have no ill will towards anybody. Considering the things that we've encountered down here, people harboring no ill will is a blessing to us, so... As hostile all. as this world is down here, I find it unnecessary. Well, you still scare me, but you're all right by me. So, thank you for. We hopefully will all meet once more. Not looking forward to that, but okay. <laughs> <laughs> only for the other reasons that you uh, ominously spoke of. But yes, okay. I'll try to count it as a blessing. Okay. And, uh, until then, um, all right. And with that, he gonna, says, and... I'm gonna grow some. Uh, 
good berries for him as he's leaving. <laughs> All right. And just, like, hand them off to him, just like, ah, for the road. All right, he smiles and just takes them. Um, and then he takes hold of Cecilia's hand and helps her down off the cart and says... You're going to have to walk from now, um, my dear. And she She'll looks be up fine. at him and says, Okay. It's an improvement. <laughs> All right. With that, he turns his cart around and makes a slow movement off through the woods. He back to the future's out of there. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, are we all good? Yeah. I think so. Josh, Rush, Marigold, Celia. Yeah, let's go, let's get a move on. And uh, Re- Reg- Reginald is. is... Uh, I'm just gonna. I'm just going to call you Reg. That's fine. I've <laughs> I've started to be able to discern some things in my head. Hmm. I think I am called Reginald. Okay. All right. <laughs> well then, uh, I guess we should. Are we, are we going to cross the same way we did? last time yes <laughs> you can, I can I'm still at the cave <coughs> are you? Oh, yeah, we, yeah we, yeah we, we never still... left the cave oh but we... uh, I don't know why because it oh I see crap All but right. it's okay I mean we were we were talking so generally you know. yeah I know yeah. but I thought it for some reason it didn't drag over Let's try it again uh So annoying. All right, there we go. There, now it is. <coughs> All right. You can also cast airwalk now, so we'll probably be. Yeah, uh, you could airwalk your asses across there. Yeah. Even Jash and all his gear. Um, what's well, the weight capacity of airwalk? <laughs> we established it was like three hundred seventy pounds or something. Mm. Let's see. That was with Cecilia. I mean, with um. I'm gonna, I'm gonna roll mine just to see where the numbers are on it. Sixty feet for four rounds. Okay. Uh, yeah, we we calculated it based on what um, Marigold was able to carry. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and if if Marigold and yeah. I could both get across, I'm sure I could get across with. Yeah, I'm probably I gonna have, put right? it on Jash so that Jash can like carry people. Let's see. Because he's gargantuan or smaller. <laughs> All right, what's your what is your strength, Jash? Uh, let me double check. I don't want to tell you. I think it's uh, sixteen. All right. Yeah. So you can carry quite a bit then. You could carry any other person across, no problem. Okay. All right. Now, traveling, incidentally, um, you are considered heavily encumbered, so your traveling speed has been pretty damn slow and fatiguing. So carrying everything that you've got, you know, it's you are not moving at a very quick pace at all. It's like your movement okay. rate is like probably a 10. Okay. And fre- <laughs> frequent... Five minute rest breaks are necessary. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Just so you're aware. Alrighty. Um, <clears throat> we're gonna cross. Gonna lift us across. Yeah. All right. Yeah. If that's what you, uh, if that's the game plan, then yep, you'll all get across. Yep. No problemo. Okay. All right. I'm uh, gonna... Across the creepy bridge. Uh, my concern. Here being, if they didn't cut the bridge, you saw them once more. They seemed concerned. 
and hasn't seen them since. The status of the Igashi might be compromised. I just assumed they'd be afraid of what we warned them to be afraid of. Mm. I was kind of hoping that we'd get there, they'd look at us, greet us, welcome us, and we'd say we, we killed everything, and they'd give us a big feast and celebration. Well, of course I'm hoping for that, but... There's no... There's no knowing with everything down here. Well, Ned floats like a leaf through this forest, not touched by any of the insanity. Um, we don't have that luck. Well, let's go in expecting the worst, hoping for the best. Mm -hmm. Get right. yourself ready. Okay, so a, few, a couple more days of travel find you at the entrance to a familiar looking tribal encampment. Uh, when you get there, you notice the first thing that you see is all the way around the edge of the tribe settlement, there are numerous tribe folk that are all kind of on point. They're all standing there with weapons kind of poised and watching. It's like they, they've, the whole place has basically gone into overwatch mode. Like they're waiting to be attacked. They're sort of anticipating some kind of assault. Oh, this could be because of us. Now let's approach with caution. I'm not going to hold up my hands in like a surrender gesture as we uh, approach. Okay. <coughs> uh, uh, do we introduce ourselves as the Brinkery tribe again? Sure. Uh, uh, greetings, Agashi. We are uh, the Brinkery tribe. We have returned. Alrighty. Uh, victorious, of course. Uh, well, I mean, they pretty much all gave you an escort out of town when you left here last time, so there's definitely going to be at least one or two on this side of the encampment that are on watch that will recognize you. Mm. Um, one of them, as soon as you get there, looks at you and he says, You stay there! Do not come uh, closer! Oh, uh, Okay. Uh, don't eat us. And then you see one of the skinnier <laughs> ones go running off towards um, the largest tent. Uh, it looks like Godor's up there. Well, let's not bring him into this. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, other than that, they just kind of stand there looking at you very, very um, dubiously, like you, you you don't remember us, perchance. Uh, what is the cause for alarm? Bruhava said the hooved ones were on the march. They were coming. Agashi tribe is ready. Oh well, <laughs> who wants to tell him? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, uh, go ahead, Noodle Arms. Let them know. Huh. Uh, they were on the march. We killed them all. <laughs> Did we? Shut up. If we didn't, then the rest of them are trapped down there. Shh. All right. <laughs> A brew harver eventually comes marching up, and he looks... When I... you were here with us last, you gave a gift to our shaman. Do you recall this gift? Yes. <laughs> yes. What was this gift? Uh, the boomstick. Boomstick. What was boomstick? What was its look? Uh, like this, and I'm <laughs> pointing at, uh, <laughs> his actual rifle okay. but uh but it would fire uh a blue light that could 
uh, target multiple things and explode. <laughs> this is true. I believe that this this is the Brinkley tribe. Let them pass. And with that, they kind of move aside very skeptically. Thank, thank you, Bruhava. Oh. Yes, um, yeah. come to the fire. We will talk. Were they attacked by people that could change shape? It's possible. It's, it's possible. Oh, yeah. We had ninjas of our. Uh, we have our. Oh, and our I'm friends missing. with us, right? Um, yeah, I just gotta go and grab said friends. Because, you know. Uh, where is she? I don't like when people mess with my Agashi friends, you know? I don't like it. <laughs> there you go. There's your other two. Alright, um, well, Marigold, uh, sorry, um, Cecilia goes and pretty much sits quietly next to Marigold. And the weird dude <laughs> just sits by himself. <laughs> it's kind of big. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Bruhaba looks at you and says, They said that you killed all of the two hooves. Is this, is this true? We. Just you small tribe killed so many. We had help. And we fought them sporadically smartly. yeah, yeah and, well smartly oh, no, sporadically well you another word right uh, <laughs> one after another not all at once I see you use hunting tactic yes <laughs> then they are no more all gone yes we think so yes we we their home was in a cave, and it's all collapsed. It's all down and we, sealed. We killed their shaman and their champion. Ah, this is good news. Yes, with no, with no spiritual leader, and with no great warrior. If even there are a few scattered, left alive, they will be no threat to Agashi. You have done us a grave service. Uh, f- food and drink? <laughs> Celebration? <laughs> Bring our friends a feast. Party? <laughs> We've been traveling and caved in. We need food. <laughs> Not that marigold crap, you know. <laughs> Bland. Not the marigold crap, right? Pretty much, pretty much. <laughs> All right, yeah. They bring you a colossal feast of, um, you know, different, um, different food. Great big plates full of fresh picked berries, blackberries, raspberries, those sort of things. Um, as much as you can eat and drink. Grape juice. Oh, <laughs> I love the Agashi tribe. Thank, yeah, thank you. Best. Yes, I'm gonna eat it, <laughs> relish, and completely unwind. Strange <laughs> messages came to me. Many about a moon, a, yes, a moon cycle ago. That warned me that the two hooves were at war. At first, we decided to destroy the bridge. Make it harder for them to reach Agashi. But then realized this would only slow them down. The decision was made that Agashi would stay and be vigilant and fight in our own territory where we have strongest advantage. I'm I'm glad this war didn't have to be fought. We are glad to. <laughs> we do not wish to see any sons of Agashi 
die at the hands of goat men. And, and have your territory been fruitful? Yes. This last moon cycle, even though the summer months are gone and we approach the winter, the fruits have been plentiful and late blooming. Many, many berries, many bushes, unusual for this time of year, and bushes that have not been seen for a while. We make a great harvest of these berries and store as many as we can for the winter. Hmm. So, so I'm going to look around and actually try to discern. Would I understand what time of year it is? <laughs> Um, I mean, yeah, you're, you're, you know, summer's long gone, and uh, it's starting, you know, you were traveling pretty much throughout a lot of the summer. By the time you came out of the cave a month later, it was starting, you could feel the chill beginning to be in the air at night. So, um, you know, you're probably only a month or so away from winter. I miss my birthday. I was in a cave for my birthday. You should have a cave party. <laughs> and, and then I'm just going to grab more food and just start like, celebrating now. <laughs> <laughs> Hit the grape juice a little harder than normal. Have yeah. a fourth thimble full of alcohol. Yep. Four so, thimbles. So, Bruhava, has this churn of food in your lens... This was like three weeks ago, thereabouts, that it happens? It has been in this last moon. Since the Lord of the Hunt visited us. Uh, who visited you? The Lord of the Wild Ned. Hunt. <laughs> Would that be Ned? Yes. <laughs> As I look at Rush, like, is that Ned? So is it him doing it, or is it what we killed in the cave? Physic. It's more like or the, the Lord of the Wild Hunt uh, that would affect growth out here than the death of a fiendish monstrosity I don't miles know. and miles apart. But it did collapse the whole network and radiate outwards, right? I mean... Hmm. I mean, I don't recall Ned ever doing anything like that, no? We're talking about cosmic forces. I'm a little more experienced with that. Uh, uh, okay, <laughs> you're right. I'll shut up. I don't know what I'm talking about. I'm Alice, just... do you want to believe it's what we did or what Ned did? Well, I'd like to think it's what we did. Then it's what we did. Okay. I, I, yes, good. I'm going to take another big bite of it. I think it's all a joint force here. I think we're working on the same line. Uh, I'd have to do some analytics and I missed my original sample group, but if it continues on the trend, I might be able to yeah, just stick it but it could have been the case, but... Well, you are welcome what, to what, stay what, what, with what Akashi as long as you like. And it, do you guys want to do a week? <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, you've got to think, if, if you put into terms living underground for a month in the dark, doing nothing but manual labor, in damp, nasty air, um... A week's worth of arduous travel, especially for Jack. She's been walking around carrying hundreds of pounds of gold. <laughs> <clears throat> I mean, physically and mentally, you guys are probably pretty worn down. It'd probably be good for our. Yeah, let's stay here at least a week. Maybe, maybe the communalness of the Dagashis will make Cecilia and that weirdo better. Does Cecilia look any better? Um. Well. She has spoken a few words. Um, she now walks by herself. She still remains very, very quiet and introverted, but she eats by herself and periodically will just, you know, nod. If you start asking her too many questions or trying to get too in-depth with her, she shuts down really quick. Mm. Um, but just in casual passing, if you're like, you know... Hello, Cecilia. She'll, hello. You know, just minor communications. But it does definitely seem like she's starting to come out of that almost mm -hmm. like a form of shell shock. 
I think a week here would do us good, all told. Okay. Did any of the Agashi react to Jash walking with all those jewels on him? Like, Not really, because they really don't put any prize in that. Gold down here is a useless thing. I mean, yeah, some people, I mean, they may adorn themselves with it for regalia and stuff as a status symbol, but they have real no, has no concept of value. Quite honestly, the weapons you guys carry are worth more to them than the gold is. Okay, makes sense. Uh, yeah, let's let's stay here for a week and okay. recuperate. All right. Is that a is that a, is that a gila? Ah. <laughs> is which one a gila? Uh, no, no. Um. Yes, that is. <laughs> So, talking to Bruhava and then seeing over his shoulder the, yeah, no, just kind of shying away for a second here. (laughs) (laughs) All right. Um, You guys want to do anything specific during your week other than just eat, drink, be merry, and physically and mentally recuperate? Um, I'd like to follow (coughs) the gap. Excuse me. Sorry? And, uh... Like to follow the uh, when they go out to gather. Uh-huh. I like to follow along with their party and kind of try and collect. Uh, I guess oh, give me a dice for... roll for that. Is that a um, nature check? Um, no, that would be. Uh, you have herbalism. Uh, yes. Then it will be a herbalism check. Well, for sure. Let's wait on There's. All right. Um. Well, much as the fruits of the forest have definitely seemed to be doing better Mm -hmm. um there are a lot more herbs and stuff than you're used to seeing as well it seems like a lot more of the I guess for one of the better terms good plants seem to have started to grow back um so yeah you do manage to gather quite a few different species of beneficial herbs sweet cool can I use that? Uh, um, give me a D. Roll a D four for me. Okay. All right. Um, you definitely gather enough to be able to make up two um, natural healing potions, if that's what you're thinking to do. Because I'm I'm looking at like using because I have the potion crafting mm-hmm. feet. Um, so what do you tell me? Uh, what What do you want to make? I want to use a level 3 uh, heal spell, which is the uh, Cure Moderate. Uh-huh. I, want to, I want to make as many of those as I can get before we enter our next dying phase. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I would say you can definitely make two of those, for sure. Okay, cool. So that's yeah. probably what I'll be doing for that week. Okay, yeah, you can, um, you can make two Cure Moderates. Um, with yeah, the how much with the recent uh, with the with the recent and yet late growth of all these plants around here, definitely a thing. Okay. Um, I would. Uh, it's probably pretty early on. Walk over to Rush and uh, say, uh, "Hey, well, since we're going to be staying here a while, maybe um, if you can find the time, perhaps uh, you can make me some sort of." Uh, carrying backpack that could be quickly detached in case we get uh, encountered uh, some enemies and I could drop the gold quickly to be able to run around the battlefield and not be weighted down. Would sure. you be interested Pretty in helping sure I me? Could, I could make something like that. Alright, thanks. You want, uh, you want a bracelet? <laughs> no, I'm good. Thanks. Uh, okay, alright. That was really cute. <laughs> <laughs> so basically, uh, just before, if I have to drop weight quickly, I can do it quick and not have to like unpack every pocket before doing it, essentially. So a backpack. <laughs> yeah, but like different. Yeah, essentially. Like I don't want to call release, it that. A though. quick release backpack. You can just. T- yeah, just like a click and just drops, and I can run with my flail. All right. Well, I mean, the backpack itself, you know, obviously would come under leather working or whatever, but. The Agashi could definitely do that part easily. 
and then you okay. can just have Rush work on the quick release mechanism. Perfect. So where it's basically like a click clip and it just drops straight off. Yep. Yep. <clears throat> I um I am gonna spend my time with Reginald becoming his best friend. I want to get glean every bit of information out of him as I possibly could when his memory starts to come back. All right. Okay. And as well as try to then start differentiating who who he used to be or who he thought he was. Right. Try to find that kind of separation. Gotcha. All right. Uh, let's get uh, let's get Rush to give us a um, engineering skill check. For the quick release backpack. Uh, did it roll? I didn't see it roll. It says two GM, but it doesn't. Yeah, nothing. Nothing popped up. Try it again. Make sure you got yourself selected too. Oh. I don't know why it's doing that. That's weird. All right, then do 1d20 plus whatever your um, yeah. skill is then. <laughs> I don't know why I'm doing that either. The macro for it must have somehow got broke. Ah, uh, 26. Hell yeah. All right. Yeah. Um, so yeah, Rush is able to kind of pretty much make it to where there literally is just two quick pull catches on your shoulder. Um, so... With a twenty-six, I'll say that that is a quick enough a quick enough release mechanism that it I'll count it as a free action. All right. Because I mean, sweet. it literally it's like, and with the weight of it, it just goes slump straight off. Yep. <laughs> so. Um, oh yeah, this is gonna work great, thanks. That'll work. There you go. All right. So uh, with the time not spent on that, um, I messaged you and Bnet. That's what Rush is going to be doing. He's going to okay. stay close to Cecilia and make sure that she gets bathed and cleaned up. And gotcha. All right. Fresh clothes and stuff. Sounds cool. Uh, is he? He's not going to try to venture into this woman's tent this time, or? Nope. Okay. Not this time. Uh, is he going to give her the cold shoulder, or just kind of politely? <laughs> I don't I mean, know. He he's spent not an be... entire week in a tent with her. Last time he was. He's here. not going to be mean to her. I mean, he's going to give her attention and everything. It's just he's obviously <laughs> preoccupied with making sure that. Okay, so that he she's just no longer a priority for him. Cool. Okay. Um, all right. Um, Shag it. So you wanted to talk to Reginald? Yeah, I'm gonna uh, just friendly, not like pr in a prying way. Uh, right, just well, to try to over the week. Just give me some examples him. of of questions and uh, and uh, what you might ask him. Yeah. Do you remember what you used to do in Hasemeyer? Do you remember where you? Were when the ship crashed, maybe how it crashed more more detail and. Uh, give me a diplomacy skill check. Yeah. <laughs> Just some of the examples. Also, okay. how are you doing today? Are you feeling okay? <laughs> what did they do to you? How are you doing today, Reginald? <laughs> now tell me about oh. your lacking in your brain. Uh, yeah. Um. Not very good. But anyway. All right. Maybe I'm a little awkward <laughs> about it. You know, a little on point with my. Questions? Uh, um, yeah, he definitely doesn't seem to be very comfortable talking about stuff like that. At least not yet. He's when you, he says, um, I, I, "I know, I know that I did come from Azamaya. I know my name was Reginald. I believe I lived in a big house with a family. I think that was my memory." Um, in the noble quarter, I, I guess. Because um, they don't allow big families elsewhere, you know, the population control and everything. Just, just. Right, right. And as I said, I do recall being on the dirigible and there was a loud explosion above. And then there was flames and then we began to s spiral down into the trees. And I, I recall that I was injured and a few of us were alive and some big thick green and brown skinned creatures took the survivors 
and enslaved them, and then they traded them to these strange beasts, and that they enslaved us and ill-treated us and brutalized us, and and uh, most of us died, and until you and your friends came and saved me and the girl, which were the only two left. And did they ever? I mean, they clearly. I mean, I know did you've been, you know, tortured and stuff, but did they ever influence your mind? Like you feel warm and dingly, fuzzy, I, weird, cloudy. I, I, I don't, don't know. Know what some of? I have these strange thoughts in my head that I know are not mine. And, and they seem to be primitive and, and angry thoughts. Do you think about writing them in a book? Like, uh... uh... They're not... They're more feelings than clear thoughts. For, for example, and I probably shouldn't tell you this, but... I would wake sometimes in the night as we were camping, traveling with the the man with the wolves and the wolves were growling and snarling at me and numerous times I wanted just to to sneak over to them while they slept and, and cut their throats and bleed them dry and, and obviously, I, I, obviously I never did that but, but these strange compulsions were there Okay, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just gonna nod and give. Uh, if if anyone else of the of my party is around when this is divulged in the week, I'm gonna give them this like kind of look, like, oh, I should probably mention this. <laughs> but yeah. then I'm, but then I'm not. I'm just gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna keep going. Like, He's like, uh, I mean, obviously, I, I didn't do anything. It was just, uh, you know, I just assumed that it was because I'm so t- I was so tired and fatigued, and and the wolves were keeping me awake. I just like, oh, for, please let me sleep. Oh, I would like to. If only I had a knife, I would gut you and bleed you out. Did you ever you. have these thoughts about? It? I, and look, I'm I'm not judging. We've all had those thoughts, especially regarding wolves, right? Have you ever had those thoughts about any of us? Like me or Cecilia or Well, there was Rush. this one evening where the big one that wears all the gold. Yeah. Well, when he sleeps on his back, he snores. And ah, there was one yeah. time that I crept over and was hovering above him. And I had a rock. And my, my thought process was to dash his skull in to make him silent. But... But of course, oh I, damn! Every one of us has done that. Every of course, I, I never acted on it, and I I realized no, no. what I was doing, Look. so I discarded the rock quietly and went back to sleep. Of of all of us that I've traveled with, I understand that the most. I mean, I understand if, if I meant any malice or harm, I wouldn't divulge these things to you. Of course. No, 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 no. This is good. This is good. I mean, you know, I'm a man of the military. Uh, we had some. Lessons, I guess you could say, about you know becoming prisoners of war if that was ever to happen. Even though you know what would attack a Spiros, like come on. But you, you know what I'm saying. Like, I understand. I understand. I, <sighs> yes, I, but I like this place. It seems quiet here and simple. And I, 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 I'm not in the I'm not in the frame of mind to deal with complicated things right now. And that's, I imagine, what Cecilia is like as well. I mean, I haven't really talked to her, but yes. Do you think, do you think they'd let me stay a while longer? In more than a month? I mean, more than the week that we have agreed to stay? Uh, yes. Do you think they'd let me stay a while? Maybe until my head's clear before I even think about trying to go home. Why don't we see this week out and we'll see how you're doing. Okay, we, we can do that, yes, yes. Okay, thanks, because I, I don't speak for these people, and I don't want to burden them at this point in time. Cause, but we will, we will. 
<laughs> at the end of that conversation, I'm going to leave awkwardly. Just go over to uh, Physic and Jash. Well, I mean, yeah, you're all kind of pretty close here, so... I'm, uh, I'm unraveling the little voodoo dolls at this point. For us uh, to see? Uh-huh. Yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> and, uh, I, I mean, I'm just kind of, like, showing them to you guys, like, uh, so, I know when I was in the cave, I thought Godor would know the most about this, and I'm, like, kind of looking around to make sure he's not sneaking around to attempt spying on us. <laughs> <laughs> Alright. Yeah, you guys haven't really seen much of Godor at all. Um, I, I kind of want to ask, I'd rather ask Bruhava first if he knows that that Godor works with these. And if that's the case, maybe we could ask him how they function or don't function or ways that are to, to safely uh, disenchant if they are enchanted in a way that we couldn't tell or... Because I don't want to, like, pull the hair out and then one of them dies, you know? <laughs> it's something I know nothing about, and if anyone that we are on friendly terms, despite their uh, chaotic behaviors. Uh, I think Godor is probably the expert, and as far as Godor goes, Bruhava is the expert on Godor. So... I... I just see clay shapes. I don't understand, but okay. Well, yeah, just, just go ask him. Right, right. Okay, just wanted to be clear on that. Um, also, how how is our how is Reginald doing? You've been talking to him a lot. Um, he's okay, Physic. Don't worry about him. You go <laughs> do whatever that is. You're <laughs> if doing. you wake up one night and he's hovering over you with a spear or something, don't worry about it. He probably won't <laughs> even stab you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> As Physic leaves, I'm gonna sit down next to Jash and be like, ah. Uh, I don't know if it's about the shit you're wearing around your neck, uh, but Reginald almost killed you one night. <laughs> <laughs> Here, let me see that huge bus over there. I'm just gonna Why, hurl he, him under it as hard as I possibly can. I'm just, just. <laughs> it's not uh, as dire as you think, but it is a concern. Maybe he just wants what you've been carrying. Wait, he? Why would he try to kill me? Why didn't he? No, no, no. I'm not saying he what tried to. He, I'm saying he had a, a feeling. <laughs> I mean, is it something I have to go over there and discuss with him? No, no, no. It's he also had that feeling about the wolves that Ned was chauffeuring around. So, yeah, but those are wolves. Well, yeah, but I'm investigating him. Don't worry, I'm on top of it. I'm I'm determined to keep track of him this entire week, so he doesn't do anything crazy we'll make sure that you do because if he kills me I'm going to haunt you so hard <laughs> <laughs> just maybe don't stay in the same tent near him you do snore so you know I have a deviated septum <laughs> you know what that is you it's not my fault. <laughs> I can't control it. Oh, did the Azimir doc tell you that yeah. your nose is fucked? Okay. One of my fights, I got hit really hard and it broke. They set it and I've snored ever since. <laughs> That's something Jash would know. Of all the things. <laughs> oh, I love it. Oh, it's good. Okay. Yeah, hey, he's um, a professional prize fighter. I'm buying that. It makes sense. <laughs> yeah, my body yeah. is my temple. I know all about the anatomy. Believe me. <laughs> I love it. Uh, so I'd be presenting my axe in front of Bruhava. And, okay. Yeah, Bruhava. Uh, <laughs> um, I have a bit of a question uh, regarding some. Artifacts the uh, the the hoofmen had, uh, which might be of concern. Mm, yes. Oh right, uh, <laughs> and then I'll, I'll present them. Like uh, they resemble. Oh, dollies. No. <laughs> no, 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 no! Please, please, no! Uh, they resemble. Oh look, my head's come off. Ah! <laughs> no. 
Uh, I, I believe it fits into a uh, a school of magic I don't quite understand. Um, that uh, these these resemble the the two that we rescued uh, rudimentarily, but um, they have tufts of hair belonging to them stuffed with thin. Uh, do, does Godor do something similar? Godor does many things. Right. If you uh, wish to know if Godor knows anything about these images, we should ask Godor. I just want to be able to safely, uh, yes. I guess, disarm them. I understand. <laughs> Agala! Fetch Godor. Bring him to the fire. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so um, you see this kid go running off <laughs> and about five minutes later Godor comes skulking oh. down to the camp um, bringing all of his <laughs> fine um, se um, serpents with him clutching his boomstick in one hand um, <laughs> he likes that he comes down. Bruhava looks at him and says, Godor, a friend from the Brinkley tribe, has something to show you. Uh, I'm going to very uh, cautiously <coughs> and I kind of regretfully hand over the two things. Cause right, so, what are you what handing him? Do with, uh, the, the two, uh, I guess, voodoo dolls. Um, so the one of the man and the uh, and of Cecilia. Yeah, those are the only ones I took. Okay. Right, he snatches them and looks at me. And you see him lick, sort of starts to sniff the hair, and then he licks it. And then you see him start to look at everybody in the camp. With a kind of a. Oh no. And he pulls out what looks like a long bone needle. Oh no, 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 no! <laughs> Do I see this happening? Like, am I anywhere near this? Um, you're right across the plane from him. Uh, okay, on, yeah, you on. see me come tearing ass and across the, the fire. Right. And <laughs> basically, he it. jabs it. Not particularly hard, but he jabs right in the left arm of the thing. Um, Which one? Well, seeing as you gave him both, we're going to roll a 50-50 on that. <laughs> uh, 50 it. or under, it's the one with with blonde hair. Over a 50, 51 or over, and it's the one with black hair. Zero one. <laughs> oh! All right, so you see him go like that really quick into the arm. <laughs> suddenly, as you might have guessed, Cecilia suddenly leaps up out of the chair and goes, ah, and screams and clutches her forearm. And she takes it away, and you notice blood is dripping down her arm. Okay, Rush launches himself at Godor, trying to get the, the doll back. All right, so you're going to, like, literally dive on Godor? Yes. I'm um, trying to get that thing back All right. That might start a war. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so you're going to make a grapple check. Uh, you're basically going to try to grapple him to snatch the doll from him then. So make a grapple check. Oh, you don't have any strength bonuses or... Uh, you get to add your... Um, on a grapple, let's see. One second. You should also be having. Did, did you have the macro? Have you got a macro? Uh, macro for that? Um. It's kind of built into the sheet there, I think. Yeah, I don't know if she used. Yeah, that, there, there's a there's a grapple button down below your base attack. Because I think you probably should have more than a straight D twenty roll. Oh, okay, maybe not. It is a straight D twenty, so Okay, well doesn't, there, there doesn't will... your BAB factor into it? 
Well, when you do a grapple check, basically, um, a grapple check is a melee attack roll. So it should be a, it should include your base attack bonus and your strength modifier. Right. Yeah. So obviously. Yeah, but my size modifier is negative four. Mm. Oh, oh, that's why, because you're <laughs> tiny. That's it. Okay. Well, that would make sense then. That'll do it. All right. Okay. So you launch at him. Um, <laughs> bearing in mind, of course. You're only half his size. <clears throat> As you dive towards him, he kind of like just grabs hold of your forearm and like swings you past him so you don't actually get a hold of him. Um, and with that, obviously, you see... Let's see, where are you? Right, Fezzik, you're there. You see yeah. Bruhava look like rather agitated and you see him look at his boomstick gleefully and a huge grin come across his face. Rush, rush, no, no, oh, gosh. And, uh, it Seeing looks... that him lift that, I'm going to throw one of my hands back, which is what I do before I'm, I cast a spell. I, uh, you're going to have to make an initiative check then. So it's going to be initiative, yours versus his. Uh, he only has a straight d20, so that's in your advantage. Um, okay. Yep, you'll get to act before he does. So I'm, I start storing up um, a shocking grasp. I haven't reached out to grasp him yet, but... Okay. Um, so yeah, you guys basically can see this happen. Um, you see her jump up and yelp. Rush jumps up, flies at him. He grabs him and swings him around to the side. And then you see him raise the boomstick as if he's going to strike Rush down. Um, obviously, you see Rush begin to do whatever he normally does to charge up some energy. Uh, anybody else want to get involved in this? I'm going to get on the ground in front of Godor between him and Rush and start pleading. All right, like, what are you going to say? Cartoon, cartoonishly pleading, like, please, please. Uh, he, he was only reacting to, to the pain that was caused. He didn't he didn't mean any harm to you. <coughs> All right. Um, Dalith or um, Jash? Any of uh, you want to get involved in any way, yeah, shape, okay, or form? Yeah, okay, so what you said was Rush, just so I can visualize it, Rush raised some or something so rush is sitting here i missed that part i'm sorry right so the turn of events he he moved Uh, unless you were particularly paying full attention what you probably would be aware of is suddenly cecilia screams yeah what what i'm saying is when i glance over what do i what am i seeing um you'll see cecilia scream and stand up clutch her arm and then as she pulls her arm away there's blood pouring down rush then jumps straight up out of his chair runs across in front of you and tries to tackle Godor, which seemingly Godor just like whips him aside. And then you see Godor in retaliation raise his boomstick like he's going to strike down Rush. And you can see Rush kind of charging up energy into his hands. And Physic throws himself on the ground in front of him. That's all happening like within six seconds. Okay, that yeah, that that's all I was asking is yep. kind of where if when I turn, what do I what part of that am I seeing? Um, I'm just gonna kind of like step behind Rush and just just grab his hand and just kind of hold it in place and just be like, "Don't start a war. We might not be able to win. Calm down." All right. Uh, well, as all this is going on, obviously, uh, Bruhava suddenly stands up and just says, "Enough." And you see kind of like Goldor looking rather agitated. And he's like, you, these are our friends. Lower your boomstick. And reluctantly you see Bruhala go, ah! And hiss and <laughs> turns and stomps away. Does he still have the dolls? He does. No. Uh, I'm going to have to go talk to him later. Yeah, I would let, I would let go of Rush's hand and just sit back down that's right. it okay well i'll let the spell fade but i'm shouting no because i don't want him to take the dolls Hi. <sighs> well at this point he is making his way probably to his hut so Physic, you just gave him cecilia take get it back <laughs> I, I, I intend to. I was going to give it to him so he could see it. He was doing that thing he does where he pokes it, and then he was going to show us how to disarm it. 
you know how weird he is? Yes, now yes, but he's our, only, he's our only hope. He's our physic, only hope of even physic, understanding. Physic rushes right. You... <laughs> He, it's not that he likes to poke things. He likes to inflict pain. It's clearly that's what he... He knew, he knew exactly what it was when he poked it. Yes. <laughs> he rushes right. Although... Yeah, but that's also his form of communication, is via demonstration. He's a very so physical... So you let him hurt her. <laughs> It wasn't intended that way. I'm just trying to... Enough. Go get them now. I'm trying, retro, I'm trying to retroactively understand what he's doing so I can better address the situation at hand instead of trying to... Uh, I'm, Okay, okay, I'm just, I'm just gonna breathe. I'm just gonna turn around and start walking towards Godor's tent. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you're and gonna I'm just scurry gonna after sit Godor. Down on the where I, am. I understand Godor more than you guys, honestly. <laughs> Alright, so you're gonna scurry off after him as he wanders to his tent. So you'll probably catch him about here. Uh, I don't wanna like cut him off or anything. Because <laughs> he'll probably throw a snake at me. Um, but I do kind of want him to know that I'm kind of walking along with him, so I'm going right. to try and place myself next to him, just kind of walk with him. <laughs> oh, with well, my... it's not long before he's kind of, like, standing next to you, or as you're walking along, he's kind of glancing at you. And almost like a child, he goes with the two dolls in his hand, he's like... Yeah. And then he carries on work, walking, and as he does so, he's kind of like looking at you like this. I'm not gonna let him get near my hair, but um, <laughs> <laughs> but I still want to follow along with him, so maybe a little bit further. All right, okay. Uh, well, if you don't stop him, he is gonna go all the way to his tent. Yeah, I'll follow him to it. All right. Well, his mud hut, as such as it is. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> as this happens, I'm gonna stand up. And walk in front of Braha, 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 Braha. Uh-huh. and I'm gonna do that gesture, the bow, awkwardly because I don't quite know what I'm doing. Okay. And I'm gonna stand up and say, uh, "Sorry for what happened, but could I ask you a simple question?" Of course. You and your 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 people are. Well, the nicest people we've ever met down here. Strong, able, capable. You know how to survive. And you've been nothing but nice to us and our and my friends and the Brinkery tribe. Your advisor seems to have darkness in his heart. He how, is. How does that work? <laughs> With respect. He course. is difficult to understand. Darkness in his heart? <laughs> what is going on here? I got some echo. Huh. Oh, hold on. I see what it is. I just, I just, I'm trying to understand why you let him be wicked. We do not let anything. He is the way he is. His gifts are difficult to understand when you are so close to the primal. He has all forms of spirit that communicate with him. It is the job of Bruhava to ensure things do not get out of hand. And, and you do a great job. And thank you for answering. I... He did not kill your friend. <laughs> this is true. I'm gonna gotta bite my tongue. <laughs> Give the bow again, and then sit down. Okay. Uh, between uh, Cecilia and Jash. All right. Okay. Um, does Marigold want to do anything? As soon as she's sitting next to. Cecilia, yeah, after she suddenly Cecilia stands up and she's got blood pouring down her arm? We'll probably heal that immediately and be like, what's going on? Okay, but, so uh, she's going to do a cure light or something? Yeah. It's not a yeah, big no. wound. It's more like somebody stabbed you with a pen, basically. Um, <laughs> mm -hmm. Alright, so yeah, she'll, she'll cure light wounds on it and make the wound go away. That won't be a problem for her. Alright, and finally, let's head up here. Um... 
Okay, so he goes into his mud hut, sits down on the ground, and lays the two voodoo dolls next to himself. Mm -hmm. I'll I'll sit next. I mean, not like next to him, but like I guess an inappropriate <laughs> distance away. All right. And basically, I'm just going to kind of like look at them, and he says, just, "You have more." I I do not. Uh, there were more with the goat men, He's but like, these ones, these ones resembled my friends, and I wanted boy, to make sure that they were safe. You uh, find more for goat or? <laughs> uh, they were in a cave, the uh, cave of the the uh, hoof, the hoof men, the the hoofed men. The men with the ho Or cloven feet tribe. Cloven feet. The cloven feet tribe. <laughs> their, sh their shaman had several and were preparing more. This before one we belongs him. to the cornhead girl. Yes, and that's my concern. And this one. Who is this one? Uh, that one Should is. Should Gordor our... find out? No, no, that's him over there. I'm going to point to the, because uh, he can kind of get a clean line of sight from his cave to the to the fire. You can kind of see him. That's the other one we rescued, the uh, dark-haired man. Please don't find out. <laughs> no, please. Uh, Godor, Godor. Uh, my concern is there is no one anywhere that I know of with the same wisdom you have regarding these these artifacts, these these dolls, um, and I was Godor hoping... knows of this magic. It is powerful magic. Hmm. Godor does not know the enchantment to bring them to life, but Godor understands the energies. Godor. Godor will drive this spike through the corn head one's heart. No, 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 no. Don't you, don't, don't you dare, Godor. Don't you do that. Don't you do that. Unless the little one brings me a sprig of Bruhava's hair. This got really intense really fast, Godor. Godor. <laughs> Little one will bring a sprig of Bruhava's hair to Godol. Little one will say nothing. If he does, Godol will know, and Godol will drive this spike through the heart of the cornhead girl. If you bring me this from Bruhava, I will give you the one for the corn-haired girl back, but the other belongs to me. <laughs> Do we have a deal? Well, Godor, in all fairness, you, you just took those from me right out when you I was asking You give them to Godor as a gift. I did The same as you... the boomstick was given to Godor as a gift. Hmm. I accept it is. Them. I can't. I can't argue with it being the same. But it wasn't necessary. <laughs> I accept like them freely. Go, Dor. Go, Dor. You can accept anything <laughs> freely. <laughs> you must do uh, what Godor why, asks. Why can't you accept freely the the hair of Bruhava on your own? Uh, it's just. It seems your nature to just take things you want anyway. Mm. Godor is too smart. Try to do it himself. You are strangers. You could do this thing without suspicion. But we are also friends of Agashi. And if. You are this... friends of Agashi now. <sighs> Bring me this hair of Bruhava, and you will get your golden hair back in one piece. If you do not. I will drive the bone needle through her heart and kill her stone dead and watch her spirit leave her body. It's not going to be easy. 
Do we have an agreement? Yes, say yes to Godor. <laughs> oh, the needle is getting ever closer. Oh. <laughs> oh. 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 Bad. We did not get a break, and I'm going to pee. <laughs> do. do we have an agreement? Yes, Godor. Yes, we have an agreement. And he hovers, like hovers the needle, like right above the tip of the um, breastbone of the doll. He says, "Remember, if you speak of this to anybody, Goldor will know, and Goldor will drive the bone needle through her heart." Okay. <laughs> Understood. <laughs> Agalecta omane salesta egoju. Does that mean I should leave? Or. <laughs> he casts a spell on you. <laughs> and you may make a willpower saving throw. Uh, okay. DC will be 17. Oh. Okay. Too bad it wasn't an iron stone of wisdom. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what the hell would an elven mage have with a... Uh, what would he need that for? <coughs> and... Oh, I'm afraid! Oh. Um, yes, okay, so the spell does... So basically you have this feeling that you are being watched. Like, as you, as you stand up, it's like a thousand eyes are staring at you everywhere you go. Uh, <coughs> I'm going to sneeze and cast a spell magic on myself. <laughs> <coughs> Alrighty. Like that. <laughs> yeah, just like that. Alrighty. Okay, so. Um, I do spell check. Is D20 plus your caster level? Against the spell or against each ongoing spell currently in effect. The DC for the dispel is 11 plus the spell's caster level. Okay, hold on a second. And I will tell you what you need to roll. Because <laughs> uh, we're level 8 now, so it's level 8, right? Uh, it'll be eight, D20 plus 8, and I'll tell you what you get to roll above. Okay. Uh, where is it? Hang on. I don't like Godor. <laughs> oh, he's a lovely fellow. I love I love Godor. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it makes me really happy. <laughs> yeah. Okay, here we go. Um, okay, you need a fifteen or higher. So hang on, no, hang on. Let me re let me rephrase that. Make sure I get it right. Um, it's either fifteen or sixteen. One sec. I'm going to make sure we get it right. Oh, that's 5th edition. I don't want that. Go away. Well, I had it just a second ago. Oh, there we go. All right. So it is eleven. Okay, so it is a sixteen. You need sixteen or higher, and you get a you get a d twenty plus eight. Well, here we go. There it is. Oh Ooh. yeah. Okay. You so you have dispelled it. All right. And then I'm just gonna turn it and be like, I'll get your freaking lock of hair. Oh, yeah. <laughs> things are not that simple. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Alrighty, um, so you do that, and you see Goldor stand up and go, No! You try to trick Goldor. Nah, I just don't like being watched. 
<laughs> well then, Godot has no need for you, and seeing as you know too much. Uh, can I can I try and grab the thing and cast stone form on it? Um, it'll be an initiative check if, if you're not, gonna do if that. It would just be him. Okay. Um. So. <laughs> What's happening? Things just oh. got way too intense, way too fast. All right, oh, uh, he's oh, quicker oh, than you. Almost a one. Um, so you're gonna try to. So what are you gonna try to do? I was trying to grab it and turn it to stone. <laughs> uh, what, the doll or the needle yeah, yeah, or the doll? The doll? doll. Yeah. All right, so you're gonna make a dash for the doll. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Um. So yeah. All right. So you basically die for the doll. As you do so, Goldrar suddenly dies into action. He's just a little faster than you. And... We will see what happens next <sighs> week. Perfect timing for a cliffhanger. So there we go. All right. Well, um, what just occurred? Did you just kill... Did you just rescue and then kill Cecilia? Well met. I'm Gorbad, the Dungeon Master here on How We Roll, as well as the author of TheDMsBlog.com, where you can find lots of fun and interesting articles for both Dungeon Masters and players alike. If you'd like to keep up with the show, follow us on Twitter at How We Roll. Check out our website, www.HowWeRoll.com. And for our past campaigns and for some fun bonus content, follow us on YouTube at, you've guessed it, How We Roll. We hope to see you all again real soon. Cheers, guys. Oh, hey. It's me, Satchmo. Uh, I play Physic here on How Reroll. Like, I got two more of these to take care of, so I'm, I'm going to cut it short. But uh, if you want to follow me anywhere, say Twitch or Twitter, it's just Satchmo. And Satchmo just about everywhere. Uh, I'm, I'm glad you joined us tonight. I hope you come back to again sometime. <laughs> Stinks. Hey everybody, Shagget here. I play a character on How We Roll. I'm not going to tell you who I play because if they die, I'm going to have to redo it. I've already done it once, never again. Follow me on Twitter at Ineb underscore Convos and I'll see you guys on How We Roll. And that's how air works. <laughs> what a good story. And I also hope you enjoyed today's story on How We Roll. I'm Jane and I play If you want to follow me on social media, I do have a Twitter and it is Jane on Twitch with a zero, not no. Uh, that's all I have to say, so peace suckers, For bye! Myself. Roll the clip. Hello everyone, I play Jash Windstriker, a level 5 human fighter. And I really like playing him because he does really cool stuff all the time. And there you have it. Uh, you guys can follow me on Twitter at MaddieSweetTweet. And thank you so much for watching every Monday and Thursday. You guys are the best. I'm having a fantastic time on how we roll so far, even though uh, my character first ever got killed off. No big deal. No problem. We'll see you guys next time. <laughs> Hey guys, I am the Dragon Spooker, and for you and how we roll this time, I'm playing Rush Brinkery, the gnomish, gnome, gnomely, gnomian, gnomian engineering sorcerer. If you don't get enough with me on the show, then you can follow me on Twitter at Dragon Spooker. You can also check out my channel, which I should be streaming more in here in the future with my new rig this year, at twitch.tv slash the dragon spooker. I'll see you next episode.